The 1994 high school football season has been whittled down to this, the PIAA state championship game. Two teams clash that have exhibited very few flaws to this point, posting 14-0 records on opposite sides of the same state. Last week, the Eastern entry in today's final showdown gave the ball to its fullback, who rushed for nearly 200 yards and four scores in a 28-7 win. Today's Western representative was not as fortunate to have a monster game on the ground, but it did unveil a defense that intercepted the opposition four times en route to a 7-6 victory. There will be one winner and one loser today, but each young man that takes the field in Altoona can proudly say he played for a state championship. The number one McKeesport Tigers battle the number two Downingtown Whippets in the PIAA state title game. It's coming up next. WIXZ Sports presents High School Football 94. The PIAA Quad A State Championship game this afternoon is sponsored in part by WPXI TV and Channel 11 News, Community College of Allegheny County South Campus, Irwin Bank and Trust, the 1700 men and women of U.S. Steel Claritin Works, Man's Drug Store, and Man's Sick Room Service, the Wilson Bomb Agency, Buy and Fly Mini Markets, McKee Sport Hospital, Level Green Plumbing and Heating, White Oak Chrysler Plymouth, The Elbow Room, Castoro Iron and Metal, Heritage Harley-Davidson, and Lambert's Market. This afternoon's broadcast is also sponsored by the McKeesport Daily News, the law firm of Adams, Myers, and Baskowski, Northeast Candy, Senator Albert V. Bud Bellin, Nigro's Restaurant, Allegheny Intermediate Unit, and Project Head Start. Dan McIntyre, attorney at law, Center for Substance Abuse, McKeesport Housing Corporation, Kurbanic and Kurbanic, Pleasant Hills Chrysler Plymouth, Christina's Restaurant, Halkovitz and Steinberg, and Penn State University McKeesport Campus. Now let's go live to Mansion Park Stadium in Altoona. And here to call all of this afternoon's action is WIXZ's Paul Patera. Pennsylvania, Paul Patera with you for the play-by-play. -play. Norm Vargo alongside, and get ready. The W, the PIAA State Championship Quad A football game for the McKee Sport Tigers and the Downingtown Whip. It's going to be underway in about eight minutes. If you were driving around and said to yourself, "Oh no, it's past four o'clock. I missed kickoff. Well, you got a lucky break. They're not kicking this one off till 4:30 due to the length of the first game played here this afternoon between Mount Carmel." and Forest Hills won by Mount Carmel by a 20-14 to 14 score. So the three champions they've crowned thus far, Mount Carmel, Berwick, Southern Columbia, all the Eastern representatives here at the PIAA Championships. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for today's football game. First for the Downingtown Whippets, the District 1 champion, coming in with a 13-0 record on offense. The quarterback, Mike Dominic, the running back, a pair of 1,000-yard rushers, Bryn Boggs and Aaron Harris. The wing back is Sean Ruffing, the wide receiver Matt Winkler, the tight end Alex Clift. At the tackles, Big Bob Carl and Tim Walter. The guards are Steve Newman and Wilby Jones, and the center is Sean Chipman. In the defense, in the 4-4-3, at the defensive ends, Wilby Jones and Jason Kane. The tackles are Bob Carl and Steve Newman. The linebackers, Dan Ellis and Sean Ruffing on the outside, Aaron Harris and Alex Clift on the inside. At the corners, Mike Dominic and... Matt Winkler, and the safety is Bryn Boggs, and of course the head coach, John Barr. For the McKee Sport Tigers, the quarterback of the no-huddle, triple-option wishbone is Billy Isber. His halfbacks are Glenn Allen and Jermaine Cromarty. The fullback will be either Keontae Campbell or Casey Holtzman. The tackle is Jim Litzinger and Paul Farrell. The center is Steve Kovac, and the guards are Brandon Short and Raheem Allen. The tight end is Ed Stockett, and the split end is Ron Rutherford, who will also be handling all of the kicking. On defense in the 3-4-4, the nose tackle is Mark Steele. The defensive ends are Josh Lefkowitz and Tom Knight. Linebackers on the outside, Jared Miller and Roger Wilson. On the inside, Bob Eastman and Brandon Short. At the corners, Jermaine Cromarty and Jason Harrison. And the safeties are Keelan Rozier and Sayon Cohen. And the head coach of the McKee Sport Tigers, 14-0. And, and the WPIL champions is, of course, George Smith. And it's just been a great, great season for the Tigers who are getting ready to take the field, as are the Whippets of Downingtown. The Whippets are coming 
out of the tunnel across the way. And the Tigers are going to be coming out on the field from under us here. We're still about, oh, five minutes away from kickoff. But as we told you, a strong contingent of McKee Sport fans made this trip 43 busloads. So there's a lot of McKee Sport here, people, people here to try to cheer on the Tigers. Tremendous amount of support for the Tigers. Uh, uh, John Finches was out, uh, dispatched him out into the rain uh, to see how many people to cut the high, so to speak. And he says that this side is filled. Uh, Tom Bradley, a very capable athletic director here at Altoona High School, uh, told me before the game that uh, a mansion park stadium seats 10,500 uh, people. Well, they have 3,500 over here at the Downingtown section. It's completely filled, banned and all. And there's 7,000 seats in the McKeesport section. And it's wall-to-wall -wall people, umbrellas, parkers, anything you want to say. Paul, interesting omen here. Uh, before the game, uh, I mean, we're looking at the, uh, the game before this. Forest Hills was retired in, in black and, or, uh, blue and gold and white jerseys, yellow pants. Uh, same thing as uh, Downingtown, uh, Mont Carmel, uh, the Red Tornado, so to speak. Uh, they were clad in red and white. Now look at this. Here, they, here comes Downingtown on the field. Look like a carbon copy of Forest Hills. And there's McKee Sports. They're wearing their red and white uh, uniforms also. And they're using the same dressing rooms. Downingtown is using the dressing room of Forest Hills. And McKee Sport is on the side that Mont Carmel. Is that an omen? Mont Carmel and McKee Sport, is it preordained that the Tigers are going to win? We will know in just about two hours. Taking a look at the officials for this football game, William Grant is the referee. Berkeley Reed Jr., the umpire. Donald Kingsbury, the line judge. Robert Ribick Jr. is the field judge. James Yerger is the side judge. And Joe Armstrong is the back judge. The two teams have taken the field for the state championship football game. And as we told you in the kickoff show, they have now crowned 27 state champions since the PIAA tournament came on, got underway in 1988. Only six have been crowned from the WPIAL. Four of them, though, have come out of the quad. And they have just announced the Tigers over the PA system, and these fans are going bonkers. Have never seen anything quite like Tiger Mania that has overtaken the key sport. It's a trick thing you uh, bring out, Paul. You know, uh, the East uh, has claimed the first three championship trophies, state championship trophies, uh, this weekend, Super Weekend in Altoona. And now it's up to McKee Sport to, uh, uh, to you know, preserve, uh, how shall we say, the, uh, the faith or the quality of the West. They're the West for the last chance. And they're the only, one of only two WPIAL teams that qualified to get here uh, for this weekend's activities. The other one, Western Beaver, lost yesterday 49-6 to to Southern Columbia. But Southern Columbia's nickname is the Tigers, so we've already had one Tiger team win. But the Sharon Tigers, they went down to the Berwick Bulldogs last night in the AAA game 21-7. to And as we told you, that's the third state championship won by Berwick, by far the most. Only uh, Bethlehem Catholic has won more than one. Bethlehem Catholic is the only team to ever win it in two different classes. They have a double-A and triple-A championship under their belts. It's an interesting thing here, Paul, on the sidelines. There's a, a big, a huge helmet uh, on the Tiger sideline. It bears the, uh, the uh, logo of the Arizona Cardinals. Could this be something? Could Buddy Ryan be after rooting for the Tigers today? <laughs> Everybody's a McKee Sport Tiger fan today. It looks like we're going to be a few minutes from kickoff of this football game while they're announcing the starting lineup. So let's take a break here at Mansion Park in Altoona, Pennsylvania. And uh, as we're still, like we told you, coming up on kickoff, you're listening to the PIAA State Championship game on WIXZ. For the best insurance values around, go to an independent agency like the Wilson Baum Agency. They can offer you a wider range of policies so you can choose the one that represents the best value for your exact needs. They can fulfill your business and personal needs, including homeowners, auto, life, even nursing home, and home health care coverage. For major insurers like the CNA Insurance Companies, call the Wilson Baum Agency at 751-2200. That's 751-2200. The Wilson Baum Agency. And now, a moment with one of the 1,700 men and women of U.S. Steel Claritin Works. Hi, I'm Howard Wilde of Glassport. I'm a mechanical repairman. I'm originally from Philadelphia. I've got 28 years. 
I'm glad to see the support and involvement in one end of the state is as strong as the other. The 1,700 men and women of U.S. Steel Clareton Works making a difference on the job and in your community. For a complete wrap-up of today's championship game, read Monday's McKeesport Daily News, available at newsstands throughout the area. No one covers the Tigers like the Daily News. We're introducing the McKeesport Tigers starting defense here at Mansion Park, Altoona, Pennsylvania. Still raining. We have had a steady rain throughout the, of the day here at, um, at Mansion Park, and it's going to be a slick, a slick turf. There's, there's no doubt about that. Uh, interesting thing, Paul, as you're watching the Tiger defense being introduced here, as you said, the Donington Town players stop what they're doing and they're looking at them. They want to take a good look at this defense. They're looking for number 60, Brandon Short. Wixie 1360 reminds you to catch the highlights of this state championship game tonight at 11 on the Channel 11 News Night Beat, and again tomorrow morning on Channel 11 News Sunday morning. That program begins at 9 a.m. Paul Patera, Norm Vargo on the extended Wilson Bomb kickoff show. It's uh, wrapping up. We're getting ready to play some football soon. They're introducing the Tigers starting lineup. Coming out with a very, when they're introduced, a very business businessman-like walk. At the dining time, uh, uh, people were introduced. They ran through uh, two rows of students and cheerleaders. They ran like crazy. The Tigers are taking it easy. They're walking. That's become a trend, though. Even last uh, Friday night up at uh, Erie Central, both teams just walked on from the dressing rooms to the stadium right on the field. That seems to become a trend this year. They don't have that wild jumping around thing. It's just all business like you should say. The Tigers are business like Paul, you hit right on the head. And they're jumping up and down now as they're coming over to the sidelines. Tiger fans whooping it up. And we're going to play some football. McKee Sport 14-0. The WPIL champions, of course, by PIAA rules. They are District 7 in the state of Pennsylvania. Downingtown, the Whippets are District 1. They were the champions. They come in with a 13-0 record. Last week in the PIA semifinals, they defeated Cumberland Valley, who is the 1992 PIAA champion, um, by a score of 28-7. And Don, the Cumberland Valley star, you're getting used to hearing this, Ascari Adams, he's going to Penn State University also. And uh, yesterday, Joe Paterno landed a plum. Dan Kendra, the quarterback of Bethlehem Catholic, and off, he's going to play his college football at Penn State. So the Nittany Cats are going to be something to see next year and for the next few years to come. Captains getting ready to go to the center of the field, of course, for the Tigers. That means three-fourths of that wonderful linebacking quartet, Brandon Short, Bob Eastman, and Roger Wilson. The trio out there for Downingtown is Aaron Harris, Mike Dominic, and Bryn Boggs. And, of course, that's their starting offensive backfield. If uh, Aaron... Uh with uh, Aaron Harris, uh, I'm looking at the number here. Aaron Harris says he hasn't uh, uh, ever met Brandon Short. They're going to shake hands. They're shaking hands right out there right now. They're two of the captains. Billy Isver still work up to the final second, working on that option game up to the final second. And we've had the toss. We have the toss of the coin. We're going to be ready to play some football. The Key Sport Tigers, as Norm mentioned, dressed in the red jerseys. They're the home team. They're in the home red. Red helmet with the Tiger insignia on it. Brandon Short, Bob Eastman, Roger Wilson come over to the bench, and they are going to kneel for the traditional prayer that we have seen from the McKee Sport Tigers thus far this season. There they are kneeling for the prayer, Wilson, Eastman, and Short. And the uh, a group of students is down on the field to sing the national anthem. Don't know if we'll be able to pick that up. Well, we're, we're running out of material here, Norm. Eventually, they're going to kick off and play a football game. Yeah, that's the interesting you say about the prayer. You know, it's after the game also. Uh, win or lose, uh, the Tigers uh, this year has all been winning. But uh, they pray after the game also. Let's see if we can pick up the national anthem.
Bunch on ladies doing a fine job with the national anthem, and we're about ready to play the final of the four state championship games being played this weekend at Mansion Park in Altoona. This is the third straight year they've played all four games at Mansion Park. The first year they had four games throughout the state, and they had a couple of years where the games were played in Hershey, but now Mansion Park seems to be the site of these games. The Tigers won the toss. They'll take the football. So this marks the fifth straight postseason game that the Tigers will get the ball uh, unless there's a penalty, of course, or an onside, I mean, a fumble or an onside kick, but this will be the fifth straight time the Tigers will get the football to start the game. That's an interesting stat ball when you come up with there, you know, the Tigers are lucky. Uh, it's just up their favor in this ball game. It's what they come to come. Just think, you, you've got maybe uh, seven or 8,000 people here uh, from McKeesport. Uh, years from now, that'll be embellished to about 50,000. That's for sure. Tim Moyer putting the ball on the tee for Downingtown. The gold pants, white jerseys, blue helmets, blue numerals. Glenn Allen is the deep return man for the Tigers. Off to his left is Sayon Coleman. Off to his right is Keelan Rozier. And we're about ready to get this state championship football game underway. It's been a long and fun season of WIXC high school football culminating today with a state championship. This is what it's all about. Allen standing at about his 10. Rozier and Coleman lined up at the 15. Each in a wing kind of formation. Moyer, a right-footed soccer style kicker. Moyer approaches the football, boots it deep. Glenn Allen backs up on it a couple of steps, takes it at the 8, runs straight. He's at the 10, the 15. He's got a hole. He's at the 20, the 25, gets to the 32-33 yard line where he's brought down. First and 10, the Tigers will start there with a no-huddle wishbone. Great field position for the Tigers. Uh, Allen was just going straight up the middle of the field. Uh, a block, maybe two away from uh, big, even bigger yardage. Steve Kovac over the football for the McKeesport Tigers, and Dino Malice is in the starting lineup for McKeesport at a tackle position. Wishbone flanker off to the right side as Rutherford Dominic picks him up. Cromerty and Allen, the halfback, Holtzman, the fullback. Isber under center. Isber gives the ball to Casey Holtzman off the left side. Holtzman finds a sledding tough. Maybe a yard to the 33, and that's it. And Donington defense uh, was all over. He swarmed all over Isber. Uh, he's going to be a bruised young man after this game. He got pounded a lot last week by the Erie Central Falcons. Rutherford now going wide left. Back to stay in the bone. Second and nine, McKee sported its 33. Wider split this time by the right side of the offensive line. Isber now under center. Isber gets, gets fakes to the fullback, keeps the football off the right side. He got over the 35 to the 36 for a pickup of three. That'll make it a third and six. Isber actually gained another yard and a half, but the official, uh, uh, he tried to uh, gain a little extra yardage, and the official just moved the ball back to a bottom time. Third and six for the Tigers. This is not a team that passes much. Lieber tore in the game. Justin goes wide to the right. Rutherford wide left back, staying in the bone. Five men on the defensive front. For Downingtown. They play a 4 4 3. They're coming on the blitz. Isber option left. Keeps the football. Skirts one tackler, but only gets a yard to the 37 yard line, so the Tigers will have to kick it away. Interesting on that. Also, Downingtown defense uh, sent, a, sent one of their cornerbacks straight into the backfield. He was there to cut off the pitch man, which had been Carberty. Ron Rutherford handles all the kicking for the McKee Sport Tigers. Bryn Boggs and Aaron Harris go deep for Downingtown. They are two of the nine players that go both ways for the Whippets. Big lift for uh, Downingtown on that one to stop uh, McKeesport three and out. Tigers offense has sputtered a bit in the postseason, only scoring more than 14 points in one of the four games. Rutherford will hit this from about his 25. Whippets will be traveling from right to left as they get the football. End over end kick. Bounces at the 30, takes that AstroTurf roll to about the 26-yard line where it's down by the McKee Sport punt coverage team. So Downingtown will get it first and 10, and it appears they're going to mark it at the 25-yard line. They are led by quarterback Mike Dominic and the 2,000-yard rushers Bryn Boggs and Aaron Harris. Great kick by Rutherford. Uh, Harris was going to pick. Thoughts of picking up that bouncing football. The challenging there was Glenn Allen right there when he says, go ahead, man, pick it up. That's it. Wide receiver goes wide off to the right side. Eye backfield for the Whippets. The deep man is Boggs. Mike Dominic under center, five-man defensive front for the Tigers. 
Dominic gives the ball to the fullback, Aaron Harris, and Harris plunges through the line of scrimmage to about the 30-yard line where he's gang-tackled by the Tigers. Pickup of about five. So five yards right up the middle of that time. It is power football, just like he said. But again, the Tiger defense just swarmed to the football on that one. Harris is going to carry a lot of people around today. Aaron Harris, a nice-sized kid for the Whippets. He's 5'11", 210. And they say he's more like a halfback in a fullback's body. It's a pickup of six. Second and four for Downingtown at its 31-yard line. Now, of course, the Whippets huddle. McKeithwood goes with that no-huddle offense. New wide receiver in the Downingtown lineup, number 82, Kevin Woods. He goes wide to the right. Back set in the eye again. The deep man is Boggs in the second and four. Dominic gives to the fullback. Harris, huge hole off the right side. And Aaron Harris rips off about eight yards to the 39-yard line. First and ten whip it. He carried Bob Eastman two yards on that play, and Eastman finally wrote him down, the, uh, down on it. It was a slant uh, off to the right side. Uh, they've tried the middle, and they tried the slant right, and they picked up good yardage on both. He moved the sticks there at the 39-yard line. Matt Wink learned the game. He goes wide to the left for Downingtown. First and ten at its 39-yard line. Wingback roughing comes in motion from right to left. Give to the tailback this time. Boggs and Boggs finds the sledding top. Maybe two to the 41-yard line. Second and eight. Uh, nice uh, faking inside by the quarterback. Uh, uh, he faked to Harris uh, and came back and wrapped it around and gave it to Boggs coming inside. And an official's timeout. Referee Grant stopping the clock. 8.02 to play in the first quarter. McKeesport was three and out on its first series of downs. Downingtown has the ball for the first time. They have ripped off one first down. They have a second and eight at their 41-yard line. Uh, there's an equipment problem with one of the Downingtown players. Uh, that's why the officials, the uh, referee, is called the timeout. Uh, it looks like it's a problem with his uh, helmet. Uh, he may have to go out of the ball game. No, it isn't. It's not a charge timeout. McKeesport fans hooting and hollering. Kevin Woods back in the ball game. He goes wide to the right. Woods wears number 82 for the Whippets. Wingback roughing also off to the right side. Lines up more of a tight end. Now he shifts to a wingback. Back to the eye. The wingback in motion from right to left. Give to Harris. Left side. Harris breaks a tackle and fights for another first down. He's inside Tiger territory, dragging tacklers to the 49 of McKeesport. Uh, that time Jared Miller tried to put his shoulder in uh, into Harris at the uh, at the trying scrimmage and. Uh, just share, he just bounced right off Harris. You're not gonna, you're gonna have to wrap him up. You're gonna have to grab hold and hold on uh, because this man, this young man, has got some powerful legs. They're calling at the 50-yard line, so it's a pickup of nine for Aaron Harris. And on his first three carries, he has 23 yards. Nothing fancy about this Donning Tunnel. It's just straight power. Boggs now goes wide to the right. Winkler lines up as a tailback. Boggs is the leading receiver on this team. Now some shift, and we have a single setback with Harris. Dominic, three-step drop. Looks off to the right side. Boggs is open, and he dropped the football. Dropped the football, came right to him, and almost intercepted there by one of the Tigers. Boggs put a move on the corner and was open, but he started running before he had the football. It's a drop pass, second and ten for the Whippets. That was Jermaine Carmody out there, uh, just a step or two uh, short of punching on that football, and he had nothing but daylight in front of him. <laughs> Boggs goes wide to the right again, Woods wide left, roughing a wingback off to the left side, single setback for the Whippets. Wingback in motion from left to right. Harris right side, bounces outside, he's got some room. He's at the 45, he's inside the 40, dragged down by Keelan Rogier, but not until he gets to the 39 of McKeesport. Uh, Carberry missed the tackle on that one, but Keelan Rogier brought him down. Uh, this young man just, uh, uh, just moved inside, took the hole, and bounced right outside, just... Two Tigers missed him, uh, but uh, just outside of the line of scrimmage. That's the third first down of the drive for Downingtown. They have it first and 10 at the 39 of McKeesport. 6.55 and turning to play in quarter number one. McKeesport and Downingtown are scoreless, but the Whippets are on the move. And Tiger defense, it's time for them to come up with their patented big play. This is where they get tough. Trips left, single setback. Five men on the defensive front. Dominic fakes to Harris, rolls left. Brandon Short pops him as he throws the football Don Phillip, but the pass is dropped. It was a trapped football Don Phillip by roughing, and Brandon Short just unloaded on Mike Dominic. Mike Dominic felt that when he came up, and he's looking at his arm, and he's shaking his head a little bit. Uh, Mr. Short meet Mr. Dominic. 
Second and 10 now for Downingtown at the 39 of McKeesport. The Tigers have had their backs against the wall on defense throughout much of the postseason. Come up big just about every time. Boggs now lines up as a tailback. Flanker off to the right side, wing back left. Five-man defensive front for the Tigers. Wing back in motion from left to right. Give to the tailback, Boggs. Penalty markers done. Boggs gets about four yards to the 35, but this one may come back. Uh, nice move uh, inside by Boggs. He had a spin move, and uh, the Tigers aren't used to seeing this kind of running. Uh, uh, here, there's two running backs to contend with. Uh, they like to uh, shut down a big play. Illegal motion is the call against Downingtown. Yes, they have shut down the big play and the big running back all season. You think of Brian Ray of Central Catholic, Melvin Cobbs of Woodland Hills, Shane Kenny of Greensburg, last week Chuck Carson and Roosevelt Benjamin of Erie Central. Um, they, the, only, the only running backs to get over 100 yards were Bronson Mickens of Connellsville and Mason Murray of Penn Hills. And uh, this young man out there, Aaron Harris, a 1,700-yard rusher, is, uh, could go over that 100-yard mark, uh, mark tonight. 1,788 yards on 211 carries. So it's second and 15 now for Downingtown at the 44 of McKeesport. Trips left again, single setback. That's Boggs lining up as a single setback this time for Downingtown. Dominic, play action fake. Rolls left, gets some protection, throws downfield, almost intercepted. Sayon Coleman had his hands on it but couldn't pull it in. Right there, slippy football. Sayon Coleman had his hands all over that football and again. Uh, Mike Dominic under tremendous pressure back there from the Tiger defense. Brandon Short leading the, leading the rush. Sayon Coleman tied for second on the team in interceptions. He has picked off four passes this year. The leader in interceptions is Jermaine Cromarty with six. Keelan Rogier is the other player with four. Okay, here we go now. Uh, it's, it's a long third down. Key play, both sides. Third and 15 for the Whippets. Twin left, wide receiver right. Single setback, Harris behind the quarterback. Dominic. Straight drop this time by Dominic. Gets some good protection, sets up a screen. Screen left. Harris with the football. 45, 40, gets a couple of good blocks. 35, 30, down the sideline. 25, knocked out of bounds. Inside the 25 is a 22-yard line, first and 10, Downingtown. Very close to the first down. Uh, he just made the sticks on that one. So it'll be first and 10 for the Whippets at the 20, looks like about the 22 and a half yard line of McKeesport. A nice call in the third and 15. You gotta like this Downingtown team, Bob. They're just uh, going straight down the field, nothing fancy, uh, just straight power football. That was a, a nice call on the third and long. Uh, screen pass worked. Trips going right this time. The wide man is Winkler roughing in the slot. Boggs the wing back. Harris a single setback. First and 10 from the 22 McKeesport. Harris tries the left side, bounces outside. Gets to about the 19-yard line where he's brought down by Bob Eastman and Brandon Short after a pickup of about three. Brandon, uh, Brandon Short really rammed in on that time. Uh, I guess they met now. Give him four to the 18-yard line, so it'll be second and six. And Aaron Harris making things happen for the Downingtown Whippets. The, uh, the Tiger defense is getting good penetration, but uh, they're trying to arm tackle and they can't do it. Uh, Harris, you can't bring Harris down with an arm. Wide to the right is Boggs. Wide to the left, Wood. Wing back for the Whippet. Single setback is Harris. Dominic gives the ball to Harris. Right side. Harris has some room outside. Turns the corner. He's at the 15, the 10. Inside the 10 to about the 4-yard line. And it's starting to rain. It's, it's raining very heavily. Harris came to the ground. Thunder to the ground. Uh, it's starting to rain. The rain is just coming down, pelting even harder. The Tigers back all right to the wall on this one. That's the fourth first down of the drive for Downingtown, and Aaron Harris has gotten all of them. It's first and goal, Downingtown, at the three of McKeesport. You can bet Harris will carry the ball in here. He's the single setback. We got a wide receiver off to the left side and a wing back that way, flanker right. Boxes the wide man to the left. That's the wide side of the field. Harris, left side, into the end zone, Downingtown touchdown, and with ease, the Whippets get down the field and score first. Uh, Harris just took that a straight fire as uh, Aaron Harris was quoted before the game saying we're just going to take it straight up the middle, and essentially that's what they did. Uh, that young man showed a lot carrying. He did most of the work uh, on this first drive at the Whippets, put the Whippets on the scoreboard first with 441 left in the first quarter. That's as good a drive I've seen against the Tigers all year. Maybe the best, and Aaron Harris did most of the work. In fact, 
accumulate. He accounted for all but two of the yards on a 75-yard drive. The extra point is up, and it is good by Moyer. So with the score, Downing Town 7, McKeesport nothing. You're listening to the PIAA State Championship football game on WIXZ. Hand-dipped chocolate candy is the ideal Christmas gift or stocking stuffer, but you wonder, when do I have time to make chocolate? All the time needed is to call the original Dorothy's Candies, Route 48 in White Oak. Since 1947, Dorothy's Candies has been making delicious hand-dipped chocolate from family recipes. From marshmallow cups to peanut butter cups and truffles to turtles, if you've seen it, Dorothy's Candies has it. Don't let the idea of candy as a gift stop at home. Dorothy's Candies can mail candy cross town or cross country. That's the original Dorothy's Candies, Route 48, White Oak, a quarter mile south south of the Oak Park Mall. White Oak Chrysler Plymouth is proud to present the new 1995 lineup of Chrysler Plymouth models, including Cirrus and the Neon Coupe. The world's most advanced designs belong to Chrysler Plymouth, and the easiest way to own your own is to visit White Oak Chrysler Plymouth. They have a limited number of 94s at year-end clearance prices and 50 1994 special factory purchase cars that can save you thousands. New names, same great deals and service. White Oak Chrysler Plymouth, Route 48 across from the new Oak Park Mall. Come and see why our name is appearing on more cars in your town. And congratulations, McKee. Sport Tigers on your WPIAL championship. For a complete wrap-up of today's championship game, read Monday's McKee Sport Daily News, available at newsstands throughout the area. No one covers the Tigers like the Daily News. Glenn Allen took the kickoff and returned it to the 30 of McKee Sport. 4.36 to play in the first quarter. McKee Sport trails Downingtown 7-0 in the state championship quad-A football game. Paul Patera and Norm Vargo with you at Mansion Park. We're in Altoona, Pennsylvania for this week's destination of the WIXE Traveling Road Show where it's pouring down rain here. Heaven seems to have opened up after that Harrison touchdown. Wishbone, wide receiver off to the left side. Isber fakes, pitches the football. Jermaine's got it. Jermaine's at the 30. Cromedy's at the 35. He gets up to about the 37-yard line, maybe the 38, and the first good pickup for the Tigers. The yeah, Tigers aren't quitting. They're coming out. They're, they're, that stuff worked well. Uh, they're testing that side, and uh, they may have found a flaw in the Downingtown defense. Gain of nine for Cromarty, second and one for McKee Sport at its 30, about its 38-yard line. Now the officials are going to take a timeout. They will may want to measure to see if McKee Sport got a first down. That's very close out there. He's uh, right up there on the yard mark. Uh, it's got to be to the 39. Uh, they're looking across the field. It's close enough for measurements. They are going to measure, and that's the first big play. The Tigers had the ball for three plays, and they only gained five yards on their first series. A 75-yard drive for Downingtown in four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen plays. 73 of the yards picked up by Aaron Harris. He's, he's quite a player. They're about, oh, about half a yard shy, Norm? Uh, they're about six inches shy uh, of a first down, a second, uh, second and short. Steve Kovac over the football. He is an offensive lineman that George Smith truly loves, the starting center. So it's second and about a half a yard for the Tigers. Strong side left formation. Rutherford goes wide to the left. That's the wide side of the field. Back set in the wishbone. Holtzman the fullback. Cromarty is the left half. Allen the right half. Isber sets the play. The Tigers go with the no huddle most of the time. Isbert gives the ball, he keeps the ball, and he lunges over the 40 to the 41 first and 10 Tigers. Kind of, kind of seven men on the line of scrimmage that time. He had Harris right up in there. Uh, linebacker was right up on the line of scrimmage. Uh, it was a hard yard, but uh, Isbert picked it up for first down. Tigers first, first down of the evening. Ball just over the 40. Mark it the 41 of McKee Sport. Pickup of two for Billy Isbert. Same formation, wishbone wide receiver left. That's Rutherford. Option left. Isber keeps the football. Billy's got some room. Gets to about the 45-yard line for about four yards, second and six. Uh, he ran into a slight uh, situation there. Uh, Bryn Boggs, uh, he just, just hit him and knocked him off balance and knocked him to the, uh, to the turf. He, uh, Isber had some running room on him. Bryn Boggs is being recruited by many Division I colleges as a defensive back, included in those is Temple and the University of Wisconsin. Boggs and Harris, both All-State nominees for Downing Tom McKee Sport has three, Roger Wilson, Brandon Short, and Jermaine Cromarty. Again, the official call timeout and equipment, uh, Harris's helmet, uh, problem with his helmet is probably his chin strap or his nose, uh, his face mask. Tigers traveling left to right. 
They have it second and six at their 45-yard line. Flanker off to the right side, Rutherford, backs in the wishbone. Give to Casey Holtzman, straight up the gut, and Holtzman gets the first down to about the 47 of Donington, and he was a shoestring tackle away from going the distance. Uh, big play by Casey Holtzman. They just ran right up the middle there, and that uh, having all those people in the box, seven, eight people in the box that time, uh, almost cost Donington. First and 10, McKeesport at the Downingtown 47, 240 and turning to play in quarter number one. It's Downingtown 7, McKeesport nothing. Rutherford wide to the right again. No huddle, backs in the wishbone. Isbert keeps the football. He's running left. He's inside the 40, breaking tackles. And he's up close to the six, which are at the Downingtown 37. Looks like the Tigers are coming right back. Uh, if uh, they're, They seem fired up. Uh, we can't remember the last time uh, they were behind, and it comes behind. Uh, what do you think, Paul? Might have been the Woodland Hills game week four. They trailed early in that one, 12 to 7. That's the last one I can remember. They play better when they're behind, it seems. It could, looks like another measurement. Very close. I think he's, again, about a half yard shy, and that indeed is the call. So Isber gets nine yards on the carry. He's about uh, foot shy of the uh, marker. So the ball just short of the 37 of Downingtown. Wishbone wide receiver right this time for the Tigers. Isber gives the ball to Glenn Allen off the right side. Didn't get much, but didn't need much. He got to the 35, and that's a McKee Sport first down. Isber so passed on that play. Uh, didn't fool too many people, but uh, he gave uh, Downingtown a look. Uh, the, you know, just to keep some dot back there. Create some dot. Glenn Allen's first carry of the game came into this contest this evening with 711 yards on the season. Same formation, wishbone wide receiver right. Double coverage coming over on Rutherford. Boggs and Dominic paying attention to him. Backs in the wishbone. Isbert keeps the football after the belly fake. Got a yard to the 34, then he is met by Downingtown 34 yard line. Isbert looking over to the sidelines. Gets the play from George Smith, Jamie Eccles and company. Wider split on the right side of the offensive line again. Wide receiver also that way. Give to Casey Holtzman up the gut. Holtzman fights to about the 30 for a pickup of four. It'll be a sec third and five. You know what's surprising about this? The Tigers are driving, uh, hopefully, toward a tying touchdown, yet uh, uh, the McKee Sports fans there seem to be sitting on their hands, seem to be quiet. Do you notice that? They're, they're, they're waiting, I guess. <laughs> Glenn Allen comes over to the sidelines. Keontae Campbell in the lineup lines up at the left halfback position. Third and five, McKee Sport at the Downingtown 30. Tigers trailing by seven. Isbert gives the ball to Jermaine Cromerty off the left side. Cromerty goes nowhere. Met at the line of scrimmage on a good hit by the Downingtown Whippet defense. Uh, what do you do here? George Smith is uh, faced with a critical decision. Uh, do you punt or do you go on fourth down? Looks like he's going on fourth down. He may get a quarter to think about it. Will he break between the quarters? Because we've got five seconds and turning to play in the first quarter. Doesn't look like the Tigers are going to get the playoffs. The quarter number one is in the books. The score, Downingtown 7, McKee Sport nothing. You're listening to the PIAA State Championship football game on WIXA. an attorney that you can depend on, one that will provide immediate response to your call, contact the attorneys at Adams, Myers, and Beskowski. The attorneys at Adams, Myers, and Beskowski have been serving the Mon Valley's needs for over 25 years. If you need legal advice concerning real estate, personal injury, estate planning, or divorce, they can help. For an appointment to discuss your individual needs, call 672-9644. Contact the attorneys at Adams, Myers, and Beskowski at 672-9644 to get the care you deserve. And now, a moment with one of the 1,700 men and women of U.S. Steel Clariton Works. Hi, I'm Leonard Jones of Clariton. I am a team leader here at U.S. Steel Clariton Works. I used to coach Midget and Mighty Mike football at Clariton, formerly had my own business at Clariton. I'm very impressed with the involvement of U.S. Steel and Clariton and the great improvements that it's made. The 1,700 men and women of U.S. Steel Clariton Works, making a difference on the job and in your community. You're listening to the PIAA State Final on Wixie 1360 WIXZ. Fourth down and five for McKee Sport at the 30 of Downingtown on the first play of quarter number two. Trips right, single setback. 
Isbur under center. The Tigers have not attempted a pass yet this evening. Flips the towel, takes the football, option right. Still has the football. Isbur fakes the pitch, flagged on. Billy Isbur gets the first down, it appears, but there is a penalty marker on the field. Yes, there is a penalty marker. It looks like it's against the Tigers. WIXC McKeesport Pittsburgh reminds you that you can see highlights of this state title game tonight at 11 on the Channel 11 News Night Beat and again tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. during Channel 11 News Sunday morning on WPXI TV and this one looks like it's coming back. It's a clip uh, on one of the Tigers. It's a huge penalty. It's, uh, it, it, it stops the drive. Creates uh, fourth and uh, at least 20 on this. And we'll mark a star by that play. Isber's run nullified by a clipping penalty. And now the Tigers have brought the punt team on the field, I believe. Fourth and long. Uh, that, that clip was uh, called uh, just as Isber made the sticks uh, over the sticks, and that would have kept the uh, – he would have been at the 18-yard line on that, and the Tigers would have been driving. 11.53 to play in the first half. Downingtown leads McKee Sports 7-0 on a three-yard touchdown run by Aaron Harris, Paul Patera, and Norm Vargo at Mansion Park in Altoona. That's a key, uh, that's a big break uh, for Downingtown because the Tigers were really driving on that. Rutherford can try to pin Downingtown deep. Bryn Boggs deep in single safety. Seven men on the line for Downingtown. Maybe trying with a, trying to come with a punt rush. Rutherford takes the snap. They're setting up the return. Rutherford with a nice end over end kick that Bryn Boggs fair catches at his 10 yard line. So a nice job on the punt by Ron Rutherford. Oh, uh, yeah, very nice punt. Very nice punt under pressure. Uh, and uh, it looks like they're just inside the 10 on that one, uh, Downingtown. They're pinned back now. That It's up to the Tigers' defense. They've got to do something. Uh, the Tigers' offense was moving. Uh, they moved well. Now it's up to the Tigers' defense to come up with. They've set the team now. It's okay, guys. It's your ball game now. Wood comes wide to the right. That's Kevin Woods. Off the high backfield for Downingtown. Boggs is the deep man. Boggs gets the football off the left side, and Boggs is met at the line of scrimmage, gang tackled by the Tigers. A uh, host of Tigers in on that one, right? Brandon Short uh, is getting up on that one. Also, uh, Mark Steele was there, and uh, Bobby Eastman on a big, another big play. Bob, uh, Bob Eastman, I think he made the play. He was in there, good penetration. Give Boggs a yard, so it's second and nine, Downingtown at its 11. Mike Dominic has shown that he can throw the football. He has got 57 completions for out of 100 attempts so far this season. High backfield again for Downingtown. Strong side left, flanker off to the right side. Give to Harris, the fullback, and Harris shoots the gap through the fifth, over the 15 to about the 17-yard line. Pick up of about six, and they're having trouble stopping Aaron Harris. Yeah, Aaron Harris was right through there, right up the middle on that play uh, again. Uh... Brandon Short was at the bottom of the pile, but uh, Coleman was on the side. Sayon Coleman was at the cornerback half to meet him. It's a, a big play here, third and four, third and three for uh, Downingtown. Dominic has 944 yards passing on that 57 of 11. Third and three, Downingtown at its 17. The play the Tigers' defense has to stop. Woods comes in motion, goes wide to the left side. Double tight eye backfield for Downingtown. Tigers shifting on the defensive front. Wing back reverse. Ruffing has the football. And Ruffing got the first down with some second effort. Well, it's going to be close. Brandon Short hit him, and Brandon Short gets up slowly. It's going to be very close to a Downing Top first down. They got it first and ten whippets. Uh, that play it was a broken play in the backfield. Uh, three to whippets uh, collided, and uh, he came out of here with the football and uh, just, uh, just made the sticks. Tiger defense is going to have to turn it up a notch. Uh, they're just a little lethargic out there right now. First and 10, Downingtown at its 20. 10 one to play in the first half. Downingtown leads McKee Sports 7-0. This is a very, very important drive for the McKee Sport defense. Wide receivers each way this time for the Whippets. Backs in the eye. Aaron Harris is the fullback. Boggs the tailback. Fake to Harris. Give the Boggs. Boggs left side. Breaks a tackle in the backfield, still fights over the 25 to about the 26-yard line. Jared Miller had him for the last back there, but uh, Boggs just spun around and sh shook uh, Miller off, and Miller was beside himself back there for missing that tackle. Jared Miller had a huge interception last week against Erie Central. It's kind of the turning point of the ball game because just three plays later, McKee Sports scored its touchdown on the pass play from Isbert to Cromartie. Second and four, Whippets at their 26. 
Wide receiver right, double tight, backs in the eye. Wood is the, Woods is the wide receiver. Fake toss, counter. Aaron Harris with the football. And Aaron Harris making people miss. Gets to about the 29-yard line. Still about a yard shy of the first down. He got a great spot. It's going to be close to a Downingtown first down. It's a great spot. He's about two feet shorter. He sticks, uh, and you, you're you going to bet that you're going to see him. It's uh, it's uh, a third down and one. It's a, it's a short one. And you can bet you're going to see uh, Mr. Harris carry that football. You would think so. About a half a yard away from the first down. The ball resting just over the 29 of Downingtown. Tiger's got to get some penetration in there. Boggs wide right. Flanker off to the left side is Wood. Single setback is Harris. Wingback roughing in motion from left to right. Dominic gives the ball to Aaron Harris. Harris has the first down as he gets to the 33. Pick up of about four yards, give him the 34, first and 10 whip it. There's nothing fancy about what Harris is doing. He's coming inside, and he's taking it. He's tearing tiger. He's making the tiger, uh, tiger defense commit, and he's bouncing to the outside, and he's picking up good yardage. Give him the 33, so it's a pickup of four for Aaron Harris, having just a great first half. Same formation, single setback, twins left, wide receiver right. First and 10, Downing Town at its 33. Straight drop this time by Dominic. Gets a big block. Steps up in the pocket. Throws downfield. Incomplete intended for Alex Clift. He knocked it away, and Sayon Coleman almost had a chance at an interception. That was almost, that's the second time he's had a chance at an interception in this uh, first half of this ball game. Uh, interesting thing there. Uh, they're picking up. Tigers were blitzing on that play. Uh, he sent uh, Roger Wilson. Close to the first down. Uh, that's the situation where the whistle should have blown. Uh, that play dead. Uh, three yards from where it stopped because his forward progress was stopped and his progress is being aided by his Donington teammates, which is against the rules. Could have been a flag on Donington on that play. Third and two, Downingtown at its 42. Box wide right. Cromarty picks him up. Roughing in motion from left to right. Dominic fakes to Harris, keeps the football. Wilson's got him, and I believe he brought him down short of the sticks. Oh, yeah, it's quite a bit short of the sticks. But this could be fourth down. Uh, uh, John Barr may decide to gamble here and go on fourth down. His quarterback, Mike Dominic, wants to go for it. He's, no looking, over, he's looking over to the sidelines saying, I want to run with the football, but they're bringing the punt team on the field. Fourth and one, the ball at the 43 of Downingtown. That, that ball is about a foot short of the sticks. So I just uh, reset the sticks right now. We're looking at that. Uh, it could be a fake here because uh, Harris is a short man in the uh, in the blocking scheme there. Could be a direct snap to Harris. Moyer to punt, Allen and Cromarty D. Yes. Snap to Moyer. Moyer kicks the football. It's coming down to Glenn Allen. And Allen drops the football and pounces on it. Still a scramble for the football, but I believe Glenn Allen able to recover at the McKeesport 33-yard line on a wet night like tonight. The ball's going to slip free a few times. Allen uh, was on top of the ball, but there was a little confusion between Glenn Allen and Jermaine Carmody back there uh, trying to, who's going to uh, take a chance on handling this wet ball. Tigers have decent field position, enough time to make something happen here. First and 10 at their 33-yard line. 6-15 and turning to play in the first half. Downingtown 7, McKeesport nothing. Still coming down with a steady rain here at Mansion Park. Of course, they have an AstroTurf field here, so there's not the mud and the muck. There's the slick glaze over the carpet. Wishbone wide receiver left. Isbert under center. Fakes to Casey Holtzman. Keeps the football and gets through the hole. Gets to about the 40-yard line, maybe the 41. Pickup of about seven and a half yards for Isbert. That play's open. Uh, they committed uh, uh, Isbert's uh, faking inside to Casey Holtzman. Uh, that throws the Tiger or the uh, Donington defense, and they committed, and he just held the ball and went. He has that option, uh, Jay Eccles says. Second and three, McKee Sports. Second and a short three. The sticks are at the 43, and the ball rests over the 40. Wishbone wide receiver right this time. Jermaine Cromarty gets the football at the right side. Cutback move, spins away from one tackler. Jermaine's got some moves at the 45, the 50, the 45, the 40. Push it on, the 35, the 30. Down the sideline. Jermaine gets all the way down to about the 10-yard line. A downing time. They're going to mark him inside the 10 at the 8. And there are no flags on that. And it's a, that's, that's patented to Jermaine Cromarty. Uh, he just took, he spun inside. 
Uh, bounced off a couple of tuckers, bounced outside, and he was gone down the sideline. Oh, Jermaine, how you play this game, and when he gets going, he is tough to catch from behind. On the drive field, he's gone. Jermaine Cromerty with a 52-yard run, and the Tigers have it first and goal at the Downingtown 8-yard line. Wide receiver, wide right. The Tigers traveling left, ball on the left hash. Wishbone backfield, first and goal at the eight. And Downingtown came on the blitz, penalty markers down. I believe they encroached, we'll wait and see the call. Harris came on the blitz and he might have been in the neutral zone. I think the Tigers didn't move. We'll see what happens here. The penalty is encroachment against Downingtown. So it'll be first and goal, McKee scored at the four now. Again, John Barr's strategy was very simple. He was sending, those, uh, he was sending his two linebackers up uh, to cut down the gas for the Tigers to run through, but it cost him that time. First and goal, McKeesport at the Downingtown four. Rutherford wide right, backs in the wishbone. Isber under center. Strong side right formation. Isber keeps the football, fights for a couple. He appeared to get to about the two. Second and goal from the two. He's uh, just about just short of the two-yard line. Uh, nice pickup for Isber on that when they're carrying the ball and going right to the power. Second and goal at the two, 4.55 on the turning clock to play in the first half. Downingtown leads 7-0, but the Tigers are just two yards from Pater. Isber gets the play, Kovac over the football. Allen and Cromerty the halfbacks. Casey Holtzman the fullback. Isber gives the football to Holtzman. Holtzman up the gut to about the one. Very close to the goal line, eight closer to the goal line. Then the one yard, he's inside the one on that one. So it's third and goal at the one, and I dare say this is four down country. They're putting that ball down, a ball, it's a ball length shy of the goal line. Isber gets the play from the sidelines. We're starting to hear from the Tiger fans a little bit more. Isber shouts out the play, wishbone, ball just inside the two. Isber fakes. Pitches the football. Cromerty trying to run wide. Cromerty's in some trouble and is going to be dropped for a loss back to about the three-yard line. That time, Isbur should not have pitched the football. He had a clear running lane right there, but he, he didn't read, and uh, he went to the outside. The Tigers lost on that. The uh, Tigers lost a short touchdown because Isbur had a clear lane to the goal line. Roger Wilson's coming on the field along with Jim Litzinger, Keontae Campbell, and Sayon Coleman. Tigers are going to take a timeout. We'll keep it right here. 3.39 to play in the first half. Downingtown 7, McKeesport nothing. A huge play for the Tigers. They have it fourth and goal, and the ball is marked at the Downingtown 2. It's at the two-yard line. That was a, it was a, just a play where uh, uh, Isbert committed to throwing uh, the option and uh, pitching it wide, and uh, it, was, it was read by the Downingtown defense, and all he had to do was just fake it and pull it back and, just step over the goal, literally step over the goal line on that one. But these young men are excited, and uh, hopefully he'll get a chance. But it's a huge, huge defensive effort for Downingtown. If they can stop the Tigers here, uh, it'll be a huge lift for them. But on the, on the other side of the coin, if uh, they do stop the Tigers, it'll be on the two-yard line, have them pinned back. The Tigers are lining up for the field goal. This will be about a 19-yard kick for Ron Rutherford. Isber is the holder. So it looks like George Smith wants to come away from some, come away from this drive with something. Ron Rutherford's been a good field goal kicker throughout the year for the Tigers. Isbert to hold, Kovac to snap. Low snap, Isbert gets it down. Rutherford's kick is up, and it is good. So with the score, Downingtown 7, McKeesport 3. Wait a second, they're stopping the clock here. Maybe there's a flag down. Before we go to the break, let's see what this is all about. Penalty marker down on the field. They're huddling around referee William Grant. Here comes the rain again. So we've got a seven on the Downingtown side of the scoreboard. Nothing. And the field goal counts. No flag. Okay, so the score, Downingtown seven, McKee Sport three. You're listening to the PIAA State Championship football game on WIXV. Christmas is almost upon us. Thoughts of crowded malls and crying babies are filling our heads. Uh, but there is an idea that may not have crossed your worried mind. Harley Davidson. 
Imagine their face when they rub the sleep from their eyes and see a new Harley Davidson from Heritage Harley Davidson decorating their living room. Of course, there's also Harley Davidson motor clothes and collectibles. Surely you know someone who would love to sport a new Harley leather jacket or something more. So come by Heritage Harley Davidson on Fifth Avenue McKeesport. Fill their stockings with Harley and leave the malls behind. That's Heritage Harley Davidson McKeesport. It's a perfect combination. Christina's Restaurant and Bar and you. Christina's in White Oak is the place to go for food, fun, and spirits. Open seven days each week for lunch and dinner, Christina's Restaurant is quickly becoming one of the area's premier steak and seafood restaurants. Now is the time to book your Christmas and New Year's parties at Christina's. Or for that matter, make reservations for business meetings, birthdays, or parties of any kind. That's Christina's Restaurant and Bar, Route 48 in White Oak. The only place to go for good times and great food. For a complete wrap-up of today's championship game, read Monday's McKee Sport Daily News. Available at newsstands throughout the area. No one covers the Tigers like the Daily News. Mansion Park, Altoona, Pennsylvania, the scene of the state championship football game. Paul Patera and Norm Vargo with you. Rutherford squib kick taken by Winkler. He's over the 25 Gets to about the 28-yard line where he's gang tackled by some Tigers, and there's a ball loose on the field. Loose football. McKee's foot football. McKee's foot football. They recover the fumble kickoff. Not yet. Uh, the referees haven't signaled yet. There yes, it is. Now. There it is. Looked like uh, number 33 came up with that for the Tigers. Big play. Big play for the Tigers on that one. Force that fumble. Huge play, and they have it first and 10 at the 27 of Downingtown after the fumbled kickoff. Look like number 33 for the Tigers came up with that football. Deontay that's, Campbell. That's unofficial. Wishbone wide receiver left. First and 10 Tigers at the 27 of Downingtown. Isber fakes to the fullback, keeps the football down the line a bit, a yard maybe to the 26-yard line. There's some gang tackle in there by Downingtown. Yes, there is. Again, that time, Isbert was feeling his way there. And it's his read, uh, I guess, uh, on the sidelines, uh, Coach Dorsmith and uh, defense or offense corner came over and said, pick your gaps, son, pick your gaps. They're there. 250 and turning to play in the first half. Downingtown 7, McKeesport 3, but the Tigers have it second and 10. No gain on the play. They're at the 27 of Downingtown. Whippets with a six-man defensive front. Isber fakes to the fullback, keeps it again, and scores through. He's inside the 20, spins away from the tackler, 15, 10, 5, down to about the three-yard line. There it was, Carbon Copy. There's that gap again. They find it. Isber was there. He, he almost scored a touchdown. He would have had it. Pitched out. He didn't pitch out time. The young man was in the gap, and he saw it and took what he had. Again, the Tigers have it first and goal with the Downingtown three-yard line. Keontae Campbell coming off the sidelines. He replaces Jermaine Cromarty. Little confusion in the Tiger lineup there as to who's coming in or out. Jermaine's on the sidelines now. First and goal, Tigers at the Downingtown three. Isber under center. Isber gives the football to Glenn Allen. Glenn Allen off the left side. Touchdown, Tigers! You were right on that. It was the Glenn Allen night. Just Glenn Allen just knifed right through there. Uh, it took uh, Jermaine on and put him on the sidelines. And who do you key on when he's there? Glenn Allen with the three-yard touchdown run, and the Tigers lead 9-7. This is what it's tuned up to be. That has to, that has to really route, uh, uh, you know, make uh, Downing Town think, here we got a 7 0 leader right down the field, scored a touchdown, they come back, and bam. That's their shortest touchdown of the postseason. Coming into this game, they had eight postseason touchdowns, and the shortest one was 38 yards. That was a mere pittance, a three-yard run there. Rutherford on for the extra point. Isbert a hold, puts the snap down. Rutherford's kick is up, and it is good with the score. McKee Sport 10, Downingtown 7. You're listening to the PIAA State Championship football game on WIXZ. <laughs> Mans understands. Mans Drugstore on Lincoln Way, White Oak understands there are often times when you can't come to them for prescriptions. No problem, because Mans will come to you. They offer fast, free delivery right to your door. And as an added service, they'll even pick up your new prescriptions. And you always have assurance that Mans registered pharmacists will accurately fill those prescriptions, giving you just what the doctor ordered. 
Nan's Drug Store was founded on service. This is why they're open seven days a week, including holidays. Hours are 9 a.m. until 10 p.m. Monday through Friday, 9 till 9 on Saturdays, 10 till 5 on Sundays, and till 2 on holidays. When you or one of your loved ones is ill and the doctor prescribes medication, you can count on the professionals at Mans for utmost care and attention to your doctor's directions. Third-party prescriptions accepted and, of course, fast free delivery. Mans Drug Store, 1101 Lincoln Way, White Oak. You're listening to the PIAA State Final on Wixie 1360 WIXZ. Another squid kick handled by Downingtown, and they are stopped and immediately after they get the football about the 25-yard line. The momentum of this one has shifted to McKeesport. 2-0-1 to play in the first half. McKeesport leads Downingtown 10-7. Uh, Paul, the Tigers scored uh, 10 points. Uh, Ron first field goal and Glenn Allen's three-yard touchdown run. One minute, 18 seconds. Neither team has used the timeout yet. The key sport has used one, excuse me. Clock running a minute, 50 and turning to play in the first half. Downingtown has it first and 10 at its 25. Harris shifts to a wingback position. Long count by Downingtown. Toss right with the football. Bryn Boggs. Boggs gets about three where Brandon Short brings him down. There's a penalty marker on the field. See what happens on this one. It, uh, looking at the, uh, who's he talking, who's the referee talking to? Who is the option on this one play? Referee William Grant discussing the infraction with a member of his crew. Brandon Short's leaning in to hear what's going on. Box picked up three. Could be against the Tigers on this one. Illegal Both. motion Illegal against motion. Downingtown. So back up the whip, it's five, and make it first and 15 with a minute 35 to play in the first half. Interesting on that on that play, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Harris was moved up into the wingback spot uh, to try to block for Box. Uh, yet... Uh, uh, Brandon Short was uh, right there, but uh, Roger Wilson is night through and almost had Boggs for the loss. Roger Wilson's been the sack man, and him and Brandon Short were a couple of people I talked to after the game last week. Said one more, we're not satisfied just yet. Well, Don Chalk down on the score on the uh, in the locker room on the on the blackboard is one more exclamation point. Twins right, wide receiver left, single setback. That's Harris behind Dominic. Draw play. Harris has a football. And he's dropped for a loss. The Tiger defense is far, uh, you know, they're really fired up. You know, Roger Wilson, they're Brandon Short, uh, Mark Steele was in on that play. Uh, Lefkowitz, they're, you know, they're right in there. They're swarming at the football. Lots of three, and Roger Wilson made the initial stop. So it'll be second and 18 now for Downingtown. Neither team stopping the clock. We're under the minute mark, 55 seconds in turning. Downingtown puts trips off to the right side, single setback on this play. Dominic fakes the draw, rolls right, gets a couple of blocks, throws the ball downfield. It's complete to Harris at the 24-yard line, and Brandon Short drops him with a vengeance. Absolutely. This defense is fired up, and uh, they have now have a chance to uh, to get something else on the board, but uh, George Smith is not calling. Yes, he has. No, he hasn't. He hasn't called timeout. Looked like he had his hands up there, but the Tigers going to let him punt. The third and 11, 25 seconds and turning to play in the first half. Neither team looking to stop the clock. Probably looking to get out of this rain a little bit. 15 seconds now. Figure the Tigers might stop it at uh, force a punt. Whippets break the huddle. 10 seconds to play. Dominic down the line. Ooh. Gives it to Harris, and he is drilled in the backfield by who else? Brandon Short. Helmet to helmet on that one. Oh, boy, by Harris's uh, helmet just snapped back. Straight in with that. And it's halftime with the scar. McKee Sport 10, Downingtown 7. You're listening to the PIAA State Championship football game on WIXZ. Imagine the look on a child's face when on Christmas morning they wake up to find a brand new Lionel Seaboard freight train set cruising around the Christmas tree. You can make that dream come true just by stopping by to register to win at one of these fine sponsors. At Buy and Fly Mini Markets on Walnut Street near Route 48, McKeesport. In North for Sales at the intersection of Route 30 and Route 48. 
and on East Carson Street on the south side near Station Square. There's no purchase necessary, and you can register as often as you like, but only once per visit. These hard-to-find, big, rugged Lionel trains are made of die-cast metal and come with an AC controller, engine, tender, three cars, and a big track layout that has been a tradition since 1900. It even has an operating smokestack and a working headlight and is made in the USA. So make a Lionel train part of your Christmas tradition and register to win one today from Wixie 1360 WIXZ. And now, a moment with one of the 1,700 men and women of U.S. Steel Claritin Works. Hi, I'm Stan Markovich of Mariana. I'm a mechanical repairman and part-time team leader here at U.S. Steel Claritin Works. I've coached youth soccer at Best Center at ages of under 6, under 8, and under 10. In my 26 years here at Claritin, I have seen a vast improvement in the environment. The 1,700 men and women of U.S. Steel Claritin Works, making a difference on the job and in your community. We're committed to doing things right. Everybody at Castoro Iron and Metal says, Go Tigers! Like the Tigers, Castoro Iron and Metal is committed to doing things right for the people of Pittsburgh's Mon Valley. They take pride in the tremendous Tiger football season and urge them to victory. It pays to recycle at Castoro Iron and Metal, West 5th Avenue, McKeesport, under the Dravosburg Bridge. Committed to doing things right. Doing things right. Merry Christmas. WIXZ and area businesses say ho, ho, ho and give you the chance to win early Christmas presents and our holiday grab bag. We're giving away holiday party trays from the Olympia Giant Eagle, chocolate from the original Dorothy's Candies, a set of tungsten darts from the dart shop where you can try them before you buy them, oil changes for your car from Kevin Hunter Automotive, Route 30 North Huntingdon, dinners from Christina's, the area's premier steak and seafood restaurant, and more. All you have to do to win in our holiday grab bag is send your name, address, and phone number to WIXZ Holiday Grab Bag, P.O. Box 1360, East McKeesport, PA, 15035. When we call out your name, you'll have all day to call us and claim your presence. So send your name, address, and phone number to WIXZ Holiday Grab Bag, P.O. Box 1360, East McKeesport, PA, 15035. The Holiday Grab Bag will give you lots of reasons to say ho, ho, ho while you win presents from area businesses in Wixie 1360, WIXZ. Barge is the wide band to the left. That's the wide side of the field. Harris, left side, into the end zone, Downing Town touchdown, and with ease, the Whippets get down the field and score first. Low snap, Isbert gets it down, Rutherford's kick is up, and it is good. So with the score, Downing Town 7, McKee scores for under center. Isbert gives the football to Glenn Allen, Glenn Allen off the left side, touchdown Tigers! You were right on that, it was a Glenn Allen night, just, Glenn Allen just knifed right through there. Uh, took uh, Jermaine on, and put him on the sidelines, and who do you key on when he's there? Glenn Allen with the three-yard touchdown run, and the Tigers lead 9-7. to seven. Ten seven. That's the halftime score. It's a touchdown by Glenn Allen. Ron Rutherford, a field goal, and a vicious hit by Brandon Short. What else? Here we go. Back to Mansion Park. Paul Patera, Norm Bargo. Well, thank you, Kevin. As I get all the wires untangled here, but that, you, you set it up right there. Ten seven. McKeesport leads Downingtown with some vicious, vicious hitting there in the second quarter. I felt Brandon Short hit up here, Norm. Oh, Brandon Short helmet the helmet with Harris. Uh, you know that that thing. Uh, they just uh, Harris just they hit him straight on. Uh, just stopped him. Just stood him straight up, and uh, just bond Harris's helmet just bond straight backward. And he just as they were walking off the field, Harris kept looking back at Brandon Short and just say, "Are you for real?" It's one of those going to be one of those. But you know, Tigers defense is really fired up in the last couple minutes here of uh, the second half. I mean, they've started slow and they're moving very well. And I think it might be described best by John Barr, the Whippet coach, earlier this week when he said Brandon Short is a little less than amazing. That's the scene right here, 10-7 in favor of McKeesport. Take you back to Kevin Henry at the Wixie, uh, let's call it the Championship Control Center, where he'll 
Talk to us. Take it, Kevin. Thank you very much. Yes, the Wixie Championship Center, hopefully a PIAA Championship Center by day's end. Community College of Allegheny County South Campus salutes today's scholar-athletes. For the Downingtown Whippets, senior quarterback and safety, Mike Dominic. Class rank of 87 out of 640 students. He has a QPA of 3.75, and he also plays basketball and baseball. For the McKee Sport Tigers, linebacker Bob Eastman, 91 out of 100 in McKee Sport's numerical system. And uh, those were our scholar-athletes. Once again, congratulations to Downingtown's Mike Dominic and McKee Sports' Bob Beastman. They are our Community College of Allegheny County scholar-athletes. CCAC South, a great place to start or start again. For over a quarter of a century, Community College of Allegheny County South Campus has fulfilled the educational needs of thousands of young adults throughout the Mon Valley. And to assure that they can continue to provide an affordable quality education well into the future, CCAC South Campus is growing. Their multi-million dollar expansion will keep them competitive with the latest and most innovative facilities. Community College of Allegheny County South Campus with a proud 26-year past and a bright, exciting future. When you have trouble breathing, you want to know what to do. You want answers to questions, like what causes this difficulty, what happens in your lungs, and how to deal with all the symptoms. Maybe you don't know where to begin. If you or someone you know suffers from asthma, the place to begin is the Regional Asthma Center in Forest Hills. Their professional team will take you through a personalized assessment with lung specialists, allergists, nurses, and other specialists who will work with you and your physician to design a treatment plan that works. Dealing with asthma can be overwhelming. At the Regional Asthma Center, the process is simplified. You get the support you need to begin your recovery. For more information or a free brochure about the center, call 1-800-ASTHMA-6. Ask your doctor for a referral to the Regional Asthma Center or simply call 1-800-ASTHMA-6 for an appointment. You or someone you know may breathe a little easier if you do. Located on Ardmore Boulevard in Forest Hills. New hope for those who suffer from asthma. A division of McKeesport Hospital. been waiting for just the right time to invest your money well right now you can enjoy an annual percentage yield of six and one quarter percent six and one quarter percent now at Irwin Bank and Trust this extraordinary rate can be yours and a 20-month certificate of deposit with as little as $500 investment or as much as you like but this is a limited time offer so for six and one quarter percent annual percentage yield in an insured account stop by one of Irwin Bank and Trust's community offices offices today on Main Street Irwin, Route 30 Irwin, Rainbow Village White Oak, Route 130 Penn Township, on Broadway in Pitcairn, and Haymaker Village Monroeville. Now is the time for a safe, convenient investment and a certificate of deposit at six and one quarter percent at Irwin Bank and Trust, a good bank serving good communities, member FDIC. Hey, John Petko here for Channel 11 Sports. I can't believe another year of Skylights is over. We covered a lot of yardage in Chopper 11, and one thing I know for sure, nothing beats the players and fans of high school football in Western Pennsylvania. I felt honored to recognize these schools each week with a now coveted Skylight School Spirit Award. It's our way of saying thanks for making this the best Skylights season ever. For now, I'll see you in the Petco Zone, only on Channel 11 News. More news, more Petco, more often. Sports fans, you'll just love Nigro's. It's the place to be before or after the game. Dine on the finest Italian and American cuisine or choose from our wide selection of sandwiches. And of course, there's Nigro's famous homemade pizza. Don't forget our full menu is also available for takeout. Come in and relax and enjoy their comfortable atmosphere. Nigro's features top 40s every Friday and Saturday night. Nigro's Restaurant on 5th Avenue and North for Sales would like to wish the best of luck to the McKeesport football team and their coaches in the state finals. Go Tigers! You're listening to the PIAA State Final on Wixie 1360 WIXZ. Okay, we're back at Mansion Park, Altoona, Paul Patera, Norm Vargo, and the cast of thousands here at for the PIAA Quad A State Championship football game. McKeesport leads Downingtown 10-7. McKeesport has scored on a 19-yard field goal by Ron Rutherford, a three-yard run by Glenn Allen. Downingtown started the scoring with a three-yard run by Aaron Harris. Wixie 1360 reminds you to catch the highlights of this state championship game tonight at 11 on the Channel 11 News Night Beat, and tomorrow morning 
on Channel 11 News Sunday morning beginning at 9 a.m. Of course, this is the fourth of four state championship football games taking place this weekend. They started yesterday afternoon in the Class A game. Southern Columbia upended Western Beaver 49-6. to Western Beaver was the only other WPIL team besides McKeesport to make it to the tournament to this stage. Uh, last night, Berwick won its third state, state championship with a 27-7 win over the Sharon Tigers. And then this afternoon, a thriller double overtime. Mount Carmel defeated Forest Hills by a score of 20-14. to A great run by Mike Higgins, the quarterback for uh, Mount Carmel, got them the victory. Uh, i tell you what, Paul, this, this game's not over yet. That, that opening drive, let's go back to that opening drive that... Uh Donington made against the Tigers. They just took that ball straight downfield. Uh, Mr. Harris, uh, Aaron Harris, just uh, just a workhorse. Just kept uh, driving, driving, driving. Uh, gained all but three yards on that uh, drive. But you know, uh, Harris uh, in the last uh, few plays that, that he's carried the football, he's been really ineffective because you know he's meeting some opposition now. Uh, and I, I'll, I, they'll remember that hit. Uh, I know Aaron Harris will. But the people here just ooh and odd. And just clap, Tiger fans got their hands when uh, the helmet-to-helmet meeting. That's going to have some effect. Brandon Short did drop him. It was a, a vicious, vicious hit. The score, as we told you, McKeesport 10, Downingtown 7. You're listening to the PIAA State Championship football game on WIXE. Imagine the look on a child's face when on Christmas morning they wake up to find a brand new Lionel Seaboard freight train set cruising around the Christmas tree. You can make that dream come true just by stopping by to register to win at one of these fine sponsors. At Mossberg's Family Restaurant along the Glassport Elizabeth Road in Elizabeth. At Turtle Creek 7-Eleven, James Street, halfway between Turtle Creek and the mall. There's no purchase necessary and you can register as often as you like but only once per visit. These hard-to-find, big, rugged Lionel trains are made of die-cast metal and come with an AC controller, engine, tender, three cars, and a big track layout that has been a tradition since 1900. It even has an operating smokestack and a working headlight and is made in the USA. So make a Lionel train part of your Christmas tradition and register to win one today from Wixie 1360 WIXZ. Green Plumbing and Heating wants to rescue you this winter. It's not too early to call Level Green Plumbing and Heating at 372-5544 and ask about a quiet energy-saving gas furnace from Bryant. It saves you money by lowering your energy bill and keeping you warm all winter. This winter you could sing Rescue Me or you could call Level Green Plumbing and Heating at 372-5544. Christmas is almost upon us. Thoughts of crowded malls and crying babies are filling our heads. Ah, but there is an idea that may not have crossed your worried mind. Harley Davidson. Imagine their face when they rub the sleep from their eyes and see a new Harley Davidson from Heritage Harley Davidson decorating their living room. Of course, there's also Harley Davidson motor clothes and collectibles. Surely you know someone who would love to sport a new Harley leather jacket or something more. So come by Heritage Harley Davidson on 5th Avenue McKeesport. Fill their stockings with Harley and leave the malls behind. That's Heritage Harley-Davidson McKeesport. Join us for the best oldies around. The Pittsburgh Oldies Collector Showcase this weekend on WIXZ. Saturday beginning at noon, hear Dr. Jive operate until 3 o'clock. And then he'll scrub up after a break and continue from 6.30 until 8 o'clock. Then it's Big Ray Edwards until 1 a.m. Sunday beginning at noon, hear the doo-wop lawyer Frank Urich till 6 p.m. Followed by Jerry Braverman until 1 a.m. Monday, Jerry's back with primetime oldies from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. The Pittsburgh Oldies Collector Showcase. All weekend long on Wixie 1360. W-I-X-C Halftime at Mansion Park in Altoona The state championship football game The Quad A version McKeesport beating, defeating Donning Leading Donning Town so far 10-7 Let's take a look at some halftime statistics Leading the rushing for McKeesport Billy Isber 11 carries 57 yards Jermaine Cromedy has carried the ball 4 times for 59 yards Casey Holtzman 4 times for 15 yards Glenn Allen 2 times for 6 yards They have not attempted a pass for Downingtown, uh, McKeesport's team statistics, five first downs, 21 carries, 137 yards, 
and penalties, one for 15 yards. For Downingtown, 11 carries, 67 yards for Aaron Harris. He's got a touchdown. Bryn Boggs, four carries for seven yards. Sean Ruffing, one carry for three yards. Dominic, one carry for one yard. Quarterback Dominic, seven attempts, three completions, 22 yards. Aaron Harris has made all three catches. The team statistics, Downingtown has seven first downs, 17 carries for 78 yards, 37 yards passing on three for seven, 24 total offensive plays for 115 yards, three penalties, 14 yards. Your halftime score, 10-7 in favor of McKeesport. You're listening to the PIAA State Championship football game on WIXC. Everything for total home care is available at Man's Sick Room Service in White Oak. Making the patient more comfortable in their own home has always been the mission of Man's. Quality products to aid in restoring freedom to enjoy life again, including beds and accessories, wheelchairs, oxygen tanks and concentrators, ostomy products, absolutely everything is available from the home care professionals at Man's Sick Room Service. This includes free delivery and setup by knowledgeable and helpful technicians. And why pay more elsewhere? when MANS gives you quality, service, and competitive prices. They accept Medicare for all approved services, and they'll even do all the required paperwork at no additional charge. Same-day delivery is available on most products. They're as close as your phone. Call 672-5680. That's 672-5680. Open Monday through Saturday from 9 to 5. For better living, contact MANS Sick Room Service. 1101 Lincoln Way at O'Neill Boulevard, White Oak. Blizzards, 10-foot drifts, sub-zero temperatures. No problem in a front or four-wheel drive from Pleasant Hills Chrysler Plymouth Jeep Eagle. Hurry in during their dashing through the snow sale. Save on 95 Jeep Cherokees starting at 15649 95 Plymouth Voyagers from only 16720 And 95 Plymouth Neon starting from 10000 Tax, title, tags, and all options are additional. See dealer for details. Let them help you face winter without the worry during the dashing through the snow sale at Pleasant Hills Chrysler Plymouth Jeep Eagle, Route 51 near Century. Three mall. And now, a moment with one of the 1,700 men and women of U.S. Steel Claritin Works. Hi, I'm Oscar Simmons of Denora, and I'm a staff supervisor of industrial hygiene at the Claritin Works. I've been employed here for 21 years and have witnessed many positive changes over that time. What has made my job most fulfilling here at Claritin Works has been the interaction with my fellow employees. The 1,700 men and women of U.S. Steel Claritin Works, making a difference on the job and in your community. Hand-dipped chocolate candy is the ideal Christmas gift or stocking stuffer, but you wonder, when do I have time to make chocolate? All the time needed is to call the original Dorothy's Candies, Route 48 in White Oak. Since 1947, Dorothy's Candies has been making delicious hand-dipped chocolate from family recipes. From marshmallow cups to peanut butter cups and truffles to turtles, if you've seen it, Dorothy's Candies has it. Don't let the idea of candy as a gift stop at home. Dorothy's Candies can mail candy cross town or cross country. That's the original Dorothy's Candies, Route 48, White Oak, a quarter mile south of the Oak Park Mall. Merry Christmas! WIXZ and area businesses say ho, ho, ho and give you the chance to win early Christmas presents at our holiday grab bag. We're giving away holiday party trays from the Olympia Giant Eagle, chocolate from the original Dorothy's Candies, a set of tungsten darts from the dart shop where you can try them before you buy them, oil changes for your car from Kevin Hunter Automotive, Route 30 North Huntingdon, dinners from Christina's, the area's premier steak and seafood restaurant, and more. All you have to do to win in our holiday grab bag is send your name, address, and phone number to WIXZ Holiday Grab Bag, P.O. Box 1360, East McKeesport, PA, 15035. When we call out your name, you'll have all day to call us and claim your presence. So send your name, address, and phone number to WIXZ Holiday Grab Bag, P.O. Box 1360, East McKeesport, PA, 15035. The Holiday Grab Bag will give you lots of reasons to say ho, ho, ho while you win presents from area businesses in Wixie 1360 WIXZ. You're listening to the PIAA State Final on Wixie 1360 WIXZ. And that state championship game, getting ready to start the second half. McKeesport leads Downingtown 10-7, already a successful weekend for one ex-Tiger. Doug Schaefer, the head coach of Horizon is in Arizona, won the Arizona State title 16-14 over Phoenix St. Mary's. Norm, a touchdown with 24 seconds left in the ballgame. Uh, hey, this, this, you know, Duke Y goes back there probably at home listening to this uh, uh, football game. 
Paul and I, he's very proud of Doug uh, Schaefer and his George Smith too. They played, and Bill look at back there with the little Tigers. Uh, they both they got to where they got their start. Uh, yeah, they they scored with 24. They beat St. Mary's. They won the 5A championship of the state of Arizona, and that's one half of a daily double, a weekend double. Uh, the McKee Sport could win two championships, two McKee Sport coaches, former teammates playing in the state title game for the first time, come home with the title. 11,538 people in attendance for this football game. 17,000, I believe you said, Norm, for the entire weekend. 17,000. For it, uh, I'll get you the exact count on that. It's uh, 17,711 for all four games. 11,538 here. And you know, this, this side had everything's filled up. The stadium seats 10-5, and there's over 11,000. It's standing room only. Bouncing around, still loose on the ground. Now finally picked up by a Downingtown player, and he fumbles the football. It's loose on the ground, but I believe one of the Whippets is able to get it, but they are deep in their own territory at about the 15-yard line. Yeah, down on that football, uh, Mark Steele was uh, covering that kickoff. Uh, also, uh, number 41 uh, for the Tigers, that would be uh, uh, Scott uh, Succi was in on that play. <laughs> Mark it at the 17, first and 10 for the Whippets. Mike Dominic, their Scholar Athlete of the Week, is the quarterback. Bryn Boggs, the tailback. Aaron Harris, the fullback. Aaron Harris with 61 yards, 67 yards rushing in the first half. He's got the Downingtown touchdown. Receivers each way, backs in the eye. Dominic under center. Dominic gives the ball to Harris off the left side. Brandon Short's got him after a pickup of about three. Brandon Short's got his helmet, he's got his shirt, and he just wrestled him to, to the ground with uh, three other Tigers there to help him. Second and seven for the Whippets at their 20. Still raining. The rain has not let up throughout the entire afternoon in Altoona. Still coming down pretty hard. Haven't seen any of the white stuff yet. Boggs now wide right. Winkler roughing moves to the tailback position. Now he shifts to a wingback position on the second and seven. Woods wide left. Dominic gives the ball to Harris off the right side. Harris squirts through a hole for about four to the 24-yard line. Lefkowitz on the stop. Yeah, Lefkowitz just dove. The submarine just upended him. That's the way you have to bring Don Harris. You have to knock him off balance, and he'll trip. He's straight ahead power runner. So pick up a four on the carry. It's third and three. The ball at the 24 of Downingtown. This is a play the Tiger defense is uh, going to be tested on. Uh, they, they stop the Downingtown here and get them three and out, get the ball back. Uh, they can do some damage. Winkler in the ball game. He goes wide to the right, roughing wide to the left. Single setback behind the quarterback. That's Aaron Harris. Dominic gives the ball to Harris. Harris tries a cutback move and just pulls his way to the 30-yard line for a Downingtown first down. Now on top of him is uh, uh, Coleman. Hang on, Coleman made the tap on that play, but uh, uh, Harris just rolled through there, bounced around, made the first time. Got an official's timeout. There's a Downingtown player on his knees. Let's see if we can get an indication as to who that is. 10-32 to play in the third quarter. McKeesport leads Downingtown 10-7. Whippets just ripped off a first down, and Aaron Harris just met Josh Lefkowitz smack on and, and moved Harris. him about six yards. And Aaron Harris is down on the field. There's tending to him. There's something with his, uh, looks like he may have something with his left thigh, his left leg. Could be a cramp. That would be a blow to the Downingtown Whippets. Harris came into this ball game with 1,788 yards rushing on the season. Last week in their victory over Cumberland Valley, he rushed for 192 yards. And as we said, he will be going to Penn State next year along with McKee Sports' Brandon Short. Joe Paterno, one of the happiest people that would be paying attention to this football game. Uh, Harris feels that he may be able to contribute up there to either a halfback or uh, a fullback spot, maybe even play a little defense to get his uh, feet wet. Uh, and uh, Brandon Short also feels, you know, that uh, he can uh, play some at linebacker. These two gentlemen may be uh, fighting an odd for a linebacker spot. Both inside linebackers. Harris now to his feet. Appears to be okay, coming off the field under his own power. Of course, he has to sit out one play. He's limping, uh, he's limping uh, ever so slightly at uh, 
It seems like he may have gotten, uh, he may have a Charlie horse on him in his right thigh. Boggs wide right. Winkler wide left. Single setback for the Whippets. Wing back off to the left side is Ruffing. Dominic under center. Dominic three-step drop, looking to throw. He's in some trouble. Dominic rolls off, throws the pass. Incomplete. The better call the front, no, incomplete. Oh, oh, that was a backward pass. It looked like a backward pass, and somebody from McKeesport picked up the football and ran with it, but the referee, William Grant, immediately said incomplete pass. That was thrown to a lineman. That should have been an intentional grounding. So it'll be second and ten for Downingtown at its 30-yard line, and maybe a little bit of a break for the Whippets. Uh, you know, that play, uh, Roger Wilson was putting a tremendous amount of pressure on the quarterback on Dominic that time. Ball at the 30-yard line of Downingtown. Aaron Harris back in the lineup. He lines up as the single setback. We got twins off to the right. In fact, trips that way with a wing back. Empty backfield this time as Boggs goes wide to the left. Dominic looking to throw the quick out. Throws it downfield. Undershoots the intended receiver. That was a tight end down there. Alex Cliff almost picked off by Jared Miller. Yes, very almost Jared Miller on that, pre uh, on that play. Pressure again. Uh, uh, Brandon Short uh, hit uh, Dominic. There he's hitting them. There's just a fair game. Third and ten now for Downingtown at its 30-yard line. Key Sport Tigers have not gotten to Dominic for a sack as of yet. They have put some pressure on him the past couple of past couple of pass plays. Winkler wide right. We got a wing back that way. That's roughing. Backs in the eye. Dominic under center on the third and ten. Play action fake. He's in some trouble. Brandon Short in hot pursuit. Gets him and the ball is loose. It's loose on the turf. It's picked up by Aaron Harris. But all the way back at the 17-yard line. And, and the ball is a big sack for the McKeesport Tigers. Brandon Short sacked him. They've caused a fumble. And Harris just came in for the ball after over a couple of Tigers. There again. There's, that, there's the first sack. And it goes to Brandon Short. Brandon Short just caught up Dominic from behind, knocked the ball loose. Roger Wilson just came within a fraction of picking up that football. That was a loose football there, and Josh Efkowitz is telling the fans, let's go, let's go. The key sport should come away with excellent field position. Cromarty and Allen are standing at the 50. Moyer will hit this punt from about his 10. Jamie Moyer takes the snap, end over end kick. Those are tough to handle. Jermaine Cromarty is going to let this one bounce. A bit of a Downingtown roll. It's going to be down at the 47 of Downingtown. Make at the uh, 47 of uh, Downingtown. Tigers have excellent field position to do something. Short by Brand, uh, that sack by Brandon Short, uh, Paul, it was just a tremendous effort. And, you know, uh, Dominic looked back, and he kept looking back. He was looking at Brandon Short. He wasn't looking downfield. First and 10, McKeesport at the Downingtown 47. 9-10 on a turning clock to play in the third quarter. McKeesport 10 Downingtown 7. Wishbone wide receiver right. Isber under center. Gives the ball to Cromarty off the left side. Cromarty gets a few to about the 44-yard line, second and seven. He tried, Cromarty tried to sneak through there, almost made it uh, through that maze of Downingtown defenders. They've got eight men in the box, and he gets through there, two steps, and you're gone. Jermaine Cromarty had a 51-yard run in the first half, set up the McKeesport field goal. Second and seven, McKeesport at the Downingtown 44, wishbone wide receiver right. Isber fakes to Holtzman, pitches the football. Jermaine takes the pitch, gets a couple of blocks. He's at the 40, down the sidelines, gets inside the 35-yard line. They're going to mark him out of bounds just at the 35, first and 10 Tigers. Another first and 10 for the Tigers. And we've got Cromarty's, uh getting some running room out there. It looks like Downingtown's uh, strategy early on to stop the pitch uh, is working because Isber can take the gap and go with it. It's Isber's read on that play. Ball just shy of the of the 35 of Downingtown. Wishbone wide receiver left. No huddle, as always, by the Tigers. Isber gives the ball to Casey Holtzman, the fullback. Holtzman might have got a yard. They're going to give him maybe two to the 34, but that's it. Uh, it's something that the Holtzman is carrying, uh, holding that football. You know, he's only a sophomore, and that young man has got a, just a, a belly full experience this year that he'll carry. He's a guy that George Smith said his, his success is probably down the line, most of his big numbers. And he's having great success now. What do you do for an encore if they win it? Second and eight. McKeesport at the 34 of Downingtown. Wishbone. Ron Rutherford goes wide to the left. Picked up there by Winkler. 
fake the Holtzman. Isbert keeps the football, and he is stoned at the line of scrimmage. He might have got a half a yard, and that's it. Uh, there's that time that uh, they committed inside, and uh, Carmody was uh, open for the pitch, and it's a read, it's a read. So call it third and eight. They're going to give Isbert a yard. So third and seven. The ball at the Downingtown 33. Same formation, Rutherford wide, left backs in the wishbone. Isber under center. Option left. Isber keeps the football, gets to the 30. That's where he'll be stopped, so it'll be about a fourth and four from the 30. You had a nine-man front there. You had, nine, you had five guys on the line of scrimmage. You had four backs up front. You had a 5-4 there against the Tigers, and the Tigers are running against it. Seven minutes to play in the third quarter. Downing will be an important measurement. The spot appears, it's, the ball goes over to Downing Town. He, he came up a yard short on the play. So it's first and ten whippets at their 27-yard line. Big defensive series for Downing Town. Almost, almost, well, Risborough almost made another, made another key first down to keep the Tiger drive moving. That's back to the Tiger defense. The emphasis goes there. The focus is on them. They're in a spotlight tonight. Number 85 goes wide to the right for Downingtown. Double tight, back set in the eye. Dominic gives to the fullback, Aaron Harris. Harris fights for a couple. He might have got the 30, which would be a pickup of three. Tommy Knight brought him down on that play. Very nice play by Tom Knight. Just to hurry, just wrestling him right to the ground. Second and seven for Downingtown at its 30-yard line. The key to Downingtown is their second and short. Winkler in a ball game. He goes wide to the right. Wing back, Sean Ruffing off to the right side. Give fake to the fullback, give to the tailback. Boggs, and Boggs fights for about four to the 34-yard line. It sets up uh, about a third and three. Be interesting here. Nice faking by Dominic in the back, coach. You can't go past. you got two good quarterbacks out here. He is a good ball handler. It is third and a short Three. The ball is inside the 34. Sticks are a little bit past the 37. 5-24 and turning to play in the third quarter. Woods in the ball game. He's wide to the left. Backs in the eye again. Boggs is the deep man. Harris the fullback. Third and three. Five men on the defensive front for the Tigers. Brandon comes on the blitz and just drops the quarterback for loss. The ball is loose. There's people diving for it. McKee sport football inside the 30 of Donington. And Brandon Short with a beautiful play. And coming up for the football is Roger Wilson. Great play by Brandon Short. Just flips right through there. Flips right on Dominic straight down. He just anticipated the snap count. And as Dominic went back, Brandon Short followed him, drilled him, knocked the ball loose. Ah, Dominic turned around and there was Brandon Short. Nowhere to go. They're going to mark the ball just shy of the Downingtown 30, but it's first and 10 McKee Sport. They lead 10-7 with five minutes to play in the third quarter. The Tigers have to score a touchdown. A three-point lead in a game like this is very precarious. Broken bone this time. we got a wing back off to the left side. That's Cromerty. Isber, option, pitches the ball to Glenn Allen. Glenn Allen stops. He's going to throw the football. He tucks it under. He's going to run with it, and he gets about three yards to the 27-yard line. There was uh, there goes uh, George Smith and his bag of tricks. He's got one or two in there, and uh, the halfback pass is one of them. Pass to the tight end is another one. We haven't seen that one yet tonight. Pass to the tight end. Glenn Allen looked to throw it downfield. The Tigers haven't thrown a pass yet tonight. Looks like he picked up four yards on that play, three, four yards. Gain of three, second and seven. McKee scored at the Downingtown 27. Tigers traveling left. The ball on the left hash. Rutherford is wide to the wide side of the field. Isber backs away from the center. This is a long count. A little bit of confusion on the McKeesport side of the field as they're changing up the play, and there's the penalty marker. Isber came out of that and looked up. He was up under center and just came up and looked, looked to the sideline to where Jamie Eccles was hollering at him, and it cost him a five-yard delay. Illegal procedure is the official call by referee William Grant, so that'll back up McKeesport 5 and make it second and 12 at the Downingtown 32-yard line. Interesting situation there. Isbert was under center, looking at it, changing the, you know, calling the play, and uh, Ted turned around, just turned up and looked at the bench and changed the play. So now we've got the second and 12, ball at the 32, wishbone wide receiver right. 
Isber fakes to the fullback, keeps the football, pitches it to Cromerty. Cromerty retreats, and he's going to try to run to the other side of the field. Jermaine Cromerty's going to be dropped for a huge loss, and the ball is loose on the field, and Downingtown has a football at their 49-yard line. There it was. There it was. They, you know, they, they got themselves into trouble on that, and you get a little bit too cute. And, uh, again, it's uh, one of those... Uh, uh, you got to look at what was going on in the field, and Jermaine Comedy almost broke it this way. Trying to make something happen, and Jermaine Cromerty fumbles the football. Downingtown has it at its 49-yard line, 335 and turning to play in the third quarter. McKeesport leads 10-7, but a huge turnover for the Whippets. And Downingtown's fired up. Wingback flanker left, wide receiver right, single setback. Dominic under center, straight drop. Good protection this time. Looking downfield, sets up the screen, throws the ball behind Harris, incomplete. On the play, uh, uh, there was Roger Wilson and Theon Coleman. As he floats that one a little bit sooner, Roger Wilson may have had a pick off there. Straight down. It would have been a foot race between he and Harris. Second and 10, Downingtown at its 49-yard line. And this has been the scenario for McKeesport throughout the playoffs. Turnovers have set up the opposition and most of the time the defense has come through. Well, this is a, this is a very important turnover. Uh, Dining times course off of this, they can take control of this ball game. Twins right, single setback. Dominic, toss left, Harris with the pitch. Brandon Short makes a great tackle to drop him for a loss of a yard. Number 64 for uh, the Donny Town Whippet uh, was trying to make, uh, see that would have been uh, Willie, Willie Jones was trying to Block Brandon Short. Brandon Short just brushed him aside and brought down Harris. Looks like Brandon Short is just putting this game in his own hands. He caught Harris from behind, broke through the penetration, made a great open field stop. They give Harris the line of scrimmage, but it's third and ten. What a phenomenal linebacker we have seen this year for the McKee Sport Tigers. Ball at the 49 of Downingtown. Single setback, twins left, flanker right. They're coming on the reverse. Winkler takes the pitch, and he's looking downfield to throw the football. Throws it downfield. This is too far for everybody. There were five Tigers around the attended receiver, Aaron Harris. And he had Josh, uh, Josh Nefkowitz draped all over him when he threw the football. Tiger defense pressure. comes away again with a huge series. Now, we've seen the rain falling all day here, so this ball is slippery, and punts are tough to handle could be a big punt because McKeesport's going to be handling this one deep in its own territory. The last two punts that they were, they were able to handle, both of them, they uh, muffed. Lucky to get the ball back. Allen and Cromerty are deep inside their 20. Jamie Moyer, the, Tim Moyer, excuse me, the punter for Downingtown. Short kick, it's end over end. And both Tiger return men are going to let this one bounce, and it's bound at about the 15-yard line of McKeesport. 2.23 to play in the third quarter. McKeesport 10, Downingtown 7. Jermaine Cromedy almost hit that ball with his foot, and it bounced right into a Downingtown player. He would have had six if it had kept on going. He did back away from the football. And Dino Malice, who's missed um, about five games with appendicitis, has played most of the game this evening. Yeah, that's credit to that man. That's a lift to, uh, to the uh, Tigers, you know, but Paul Farrell has done a great job there filling in for him. Wishbone wide receiver left. Casey Holtzman's gone the entire way at the fullback position. Cromerty and Allen are the halfbacks. Isber under center. Fullback dive. Holtzman gets about four. We got a loose ball in the field. Downingtown football. And this is a huge turnover. Downingtown's going to have the ball inside the McKee Sport 20. Number 44, uh, Alex uh, Cliff came up with the uh, linebacker, came up with the ball. And the Tiger defense will be put to the test one more time. Downingtown first and 10 at the McKeesport 18-yard line. They were really put to the test this time. They kind of come up with a supreme effort. This could be their defensive series of the year. Twins left, flanker right. Harris is the single setback. Wing back roughing in motion from left to right. Dominic gives the ball to Harris off the right side. Huge hole. Harris spins inside the 15, turns the legs down to the 10. He might even have got the 9-yard line. Great yeah. run by Aaron Harris. Yeah, he's inside the 10, uh, just over the 10 that's on that one, Paul. Great run by him. Brought down by uh, uh, Steele on that one. Mark Steele. Mark the ball just inside the 10. It'll be second in about a yard and a half. 
second and two is what they'll call it on the scoreboard. The ball is just inside the 10. The sticks are at the McKee Sport 8. Winkler wide left, Boggs wide right. Wing back left also. Single set back is Harris. Wing back in motion from left to right. Give to Harris off the left side. Short yardage, but he fights through there. Still breaking tackles. Gets inside the five-yard line. Not to be denied. And that's going to be a first and goal for Downingtown. Harris never went on. They marked his progress on at the five-yard line. What a great effort. A great effort by Harris. He just uh, he just refuses to go down. He wants to, you know, he, this game means as much to them as it does to McKee Sport. And it's there for the taking. 45 seconds of turning to play in the third quarter. Downingtown... Trails McKee Sport 10-7, but the Whippets are just five yards from pay dirt. Ball's inside the five. Let's say about four and a half away from pay dirt on this one. Woods wide left. Boggs wide right. Roughing the wing back off to the right side. Harris a single setback. Tigers have a five-man front. Wing back in motion from right to left. Harris left side. Cut back move. Gets inside the five. Inside the one. He's about a little less than a yard short of the goal line. He's on the one-yard line. He's just rolled there. Brought down by the host of Tigers, batting short among them. Now the goal line defense is being employed by George Smith. That means Jim Litzinger and Steve Kovac come in, and Jared Miller and Mark Steele come out. And that's the end of quarter number three with the score. McKee Sport 10, Downing Town 7. You're listening to the PIAA State Championship football game on WIXZ. Level Green Plumbing and Heating wants to rescue you this winter. It's not too early to call Level Green Plumbing and Heating at 372-5544 and ask about a quiet energy-saving gas furnace from Bryant. It saves you money by lowering your energy bill and keeping you warm all winter. This winter, you could sing Rescue Me, or you could call Level Green Plumbing and Heating at 372-5544. There are times in everyone's life where they can't solve certain problems and seek the advice of an attorney. If you need advice concerning personal injury, probate, or divorce, contact attorney Dan McIntyre for help. Dan McIntyre understands the emotional as well as the legal aspects of these difficulties. If you need any legal assistance, contact Dan McIntyre for an appointment to discuss your individual needs at 678-9539. That's 678-9539. Dan McIntyre has offices in McKeesport and Pittsburgh to serve you. For a complete wrap-up of today's championship game, read Monday's McKee Sport Daily News, available at newsstands throughout the area. No one covers the Tigers like the Daily News. The fourth quarter underway. Quarterback sneak by Dominic, and he didn't get in. So it'll be third and goal from about a half a yard away for the Downingtown Whippets trailing 10-7 to the McKee Sport Tigers. Need a big play here by the Tigers defense. Uh, he, his quarterback just tried to sneak that. That didn't get there. Half yard short. WIXC McKeesport Pittsburgh reminds you that you can see highlights of this state title game tonight at 11 on the Channel 11 News Night Beat. And again tomorrow morning at 9 during Channel 11 News Sunday morning on WPXI TV. Third and goal. The ball is at the one yard line of McKeesport. Dominic, the quarterback, turns. Harris, left side. Harris is met head on by Brandon Short. He didn't get in. Absolutely head on. You got to give Bobby Eastman credit there also. Stop them head on. Be interesting to see where they put the ball down, Paul. Does Downingtown go for the field goal in the tie here? It would be a short kick, about an extra point distance. Ball's back at the one. They lost a half yard on the play. Wait and see the call from ref, excuse me, head coach John Barr. And it looks like the Whippets are going to go for the touchdown. They have to go for touchdown in the fourth quarter. There's already been one overtime game played here this afternoon. Mount Carmel defeating Forest Hills. Backs in the eye, flanker right. Fourth and goal from the one. Dominic, fake to the fullback. Give to the halfback, Boggs and Boggs. No! Indication yet, no indication. No! He stopped short. He didn't get in! He, he didn't get in! Short. What a play! What a play! Bob Eastman right there, stop short. The McKee Sport Tiger defense has done it again. The ball is on a goal. The ball is almost touching the goal, the goal line. What a play by Bob Eastman. Boggs, he just took Boggs on the slant and just threw him down. They, what a play. They, 
They turned away Downingtown. McKeesport has turned the ball over the last couple of times they've had the football. This time, they've got their backs against the goal line. But Bob Eastman kept Bryn Boggs out of the end zone. That's a tremendous play. What a psychological lift for McKeesport. Wishbone wide receiver off to the left side. The backs are deep in the end zone. Isber, just quarterback, sneaks to try to get some room to work with for the Tigers. Got about a yard to the two. Got that kids, you know what's going to happen here, though, if uh, the McKeesport doesn't pick up a first down, which uh, uh, they may not. Uh, Rutherford's, Rutherford's going to kick, and they've had three kicks blocked this year already. And Dinetown could end up with good field position again. Gain of two for Isbert to the three-yard line. So it'll be a second and eight for the Tigers. Rutherford wide left, backs in the wishbone. Isber turns, gives to Casey Holtzman off the right side. Holtzman about a half a yard, and that's it. The Tigers are just a straight power of football trying to get some running room. Uh, they're out to maybe the four-yard line on this one. Uh, you think? What do you think, Paul? What do you think George Smith's going to call here? Uh, they're going to run the ball. They're just going to do something simple. They don't want to don't want to turn the ball over down here. 9:20 and turning to play. McKeesport 10, Downingtown 7. Tigers dodging a huge bullet. Isber keeps the football. He's over the five. Lunges to about the nine. Still a couple of yards shy of the first down. But he did get punter Ron Rutherford some room to work with. Yeah, uh, uh, Isber almost picked that first down up. What a young man. That young man's got a lot of courage here. This is not four down territory. And Ron Rutherford's con coming under, calling on the punt under tremendous pressure. Bill Isber only 167 pounds. Not a big guy. He takes a pounding each week. And McKeesport has had some punts blocked this year. Rutherford will be kicking this one from the end zone. Bryn Boggs dropping deep in single safety, so it looks like Downingtown's going to be coming with a 10-man punt rush. See who they have up there. They're, they're coming wide. They're coming from the wide side. They're overloading to their right side. To punt. Rutherford's left on this play. Downingtown will come away with excellent field position. Penalty marker down against McKeesport. So this will back the Tigers up a couple and back, more importantly, Rutherford up a couple. That delays the miss up, but really puts the pressure on Ron Rutherford. So the snap will take place at the five-yard line. Rutherford, they got, he's got to watch where he stands, too. If he stands behind the end line, that's two points for Downingtown. He's going to hit this one from the end zone, the purple turfed end zone. Snap, very important. It's a good snap. Rutherford gets the ball and gets the kick off. And he gets a nice bounce. It's taken by Boggs at the 35 of McKeesport. Boggs is tripped up at about the 32-yard line. Great punt coverage by Glenn Allen. Nice pass play by Glenn Allen. Nice coverage. Nice, very nice coverage. But Downingtown comes away with excellent field position once again. First and 10 at the McKeesport 31-yard line. 8-17 to play. It's McKeesport 10, Downingtown 7. But the Tiger defense is under tremendous pressure again. 8-17. Touchdown at this point uh, could uh, put this game out of reach. Wide receiver left Winkler. Jason Harrison picks him up in single coverage. Wing back left, backs in the eye. Five-man defensive front for the Tigers. Dominic gives to the fullback Aaron Harris. Harris breaking tackles, fights to the 25-yard line, maybe the 24. They're going to ride the horse as far as he'll take him. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised that he didn't use him on the goal line. Harris, uh, you know, with a half yard to go, uh, Two plays, and uh, Harris didn't carry either one. They tried to cross them up with the, to give the bogs. Gain of seven for Harris, so it's second and three. Downingtown at the McKeesport 24-yard line. Wide receiver right this time. Wing back that way also. Backs in the eye. The deep man bogs. Now the fullback Harris lines up as a wing off to the left side. Dominic pitches the football to Boggs, and Boggs has some room. Boggs is inside the 20. Boggs is inside the 15. Knocked out of bounds at about the 13-yard line. Well, Clay, he was going to throw the football there. That sort of uh, froze the Tiger defense a little bit. Here they go. They're back inside the red zone again. Uh, are they going to score this time? First and 10. Downingtown is at the McKeesport 13. 7-18 to play. McKeesport leads Downingtown 10-7. Very precarious lead at this point in time. Uh, time is running out. You're inside the 7-18 left in the ball game. I back to wide receiver right, wing back right also. The wide man is Winkler. Dominic under center on the first and ten. Long count this time for Dominic. 
gives to his fullback, Harris, and Harris is inside the 10 to about the 9-yard line, which will make it a second and six. A big hole inside. Uh, they're just moving uh, the Tiger lineman right out. Uh, Dying Times, Dying Times uh, offensive line is winning the battle in the trenches right now. Give him five to the eight, so it'll be second and five. Downing Town at the McKeesport eight-yard line. That's officials time out here. Aaron Harris having another problem with his equipment. That's the third uh, time out he's taken twice for Harris on an equipment problem. And the McKeesport fans aren't real thrilled about that. <laughs> no, they're not. Okay, now Harris has got the a piece of equipment adjusted. Maybe that helmet uh, was knuckle upsided by uh, Brandon Shorts hit at the end of the first half. Second and five, Downing Town at the McKeesport eight-yard line. Tiger defense is a big play here. Twins right, flanker left, single setback. Dominic gives to Harris, left side, Harris outside, inside, drags the tackler into the end zone for the Downing Town touchdown. He dragged uh, Seon Coleman and... Uh, Allen right in the end zone on that one. Aaron Harris just been a horse when he gets that football, and he dragged the tackler for the eight-yard touchdown score. 13-10, the Whippets now lead the McKeesport Tigers with 6.34 to play. Tim Moyer on to try the extra point. This extra point is very, very important because it, uh, if uh, Moyer makes it, it forces the Tigers to have to go for a touchdown. He's a soccer-style kicker. Winkler's the holder. Still a lot of time left in this football game. Good snap, good hold. Moyer's kick is up, and it is true. So with the score, Downingtown 14, McKeesport 10, you're listening to the PIAA State Championship football game on WIXZ. McKeesport residents, you can beautify your home and make the city look better through Mayor Lou Washowich and City Council's beautification program. You can receive up to a $300 grant when you paint your home, up to a $500 grant when you replace your sidewalk, plus low-interest home improvement loans for homeowners and rental property. Call 675-5035 for more information to see if you qualify. It's your city and your home, and here's your chance to make it look its best. Call 675-5035. You don't want it to happen. When it does, you want someone to be there for you. An accident is sometimes unavoidable, regardless who's at fault. Probanic and Probanic, with two locations, Lincoln Way and White Oak, and in the Court Place downtown, is there to help serve you. Probanic and Probanic focuses on litigation, wrongful deaths, personal injury, including automobile accidents. Call Probanic and Probanic at 672-5444 on Lincoln Way and White Oak, or 281-8848 Court Place downtown. Probanic and Probanic, attorneys at law. You're listening to the PIAA State Final on Wixie 1360 WIXZ. Squib kick by Downingtown, picked up by Carl Cash and McKeesport. He's at the 25, he finds a hole, gets over the 30 to about the 33-yard line. That's where the Tigers will start, trailing 14 to 10, 6.27 to play in this football game. Paul Patera and Norm Vargo at the rain-soaked Mansion Park in Altoona. Uh, the pressure is squarely on the Tiger offense. Uh, they've moved the football. Uh, with some consistency, uh, two huge turnovers in the last quarter set up that touchdown, but uh, they've got to do something here. They've got to get points. Wishbone wide receiver right. They have not thrown a pass yet this evening. Isber under center. Keeps the football, tries the left side, bounces off a couple of tacklers and gets two to the 35-yard line. It's going to have to open up a little bit uh, in, in, inside there. They're going to have to go to that bag of tricks again to come up with something. It's under six minutes in this ball game in county. Second and eight. McKeesport at its 35-yard line. Stock at the tight end lines up on the right side. Rutherford shifts and goes wide to the left. Tigers traveling right. Back set in the wishbone. Kovac over the football. Wider splits by the defensive line. Fake to the fullback. Jermaine cromerty has got the football. Jermaine Cromartie's at the 40. He's at the 45. Slips the tackler and is tripped up at the 49-yard line. First and 10 Tigers. Almost broke it. Uh, Cromarty was there. It just tripped up. He was gone. So it's first down. Gentlemen move the sticks. A fresh set of downs for the Tigers. And they're going to mark Cromartie down at the 47-yard line. His knee touched there. Still a first down. And Jermaine Cromarty was just a shoestring tackle away from breaking it. Backs on the wishbone again. 
Fake to the fullback. Option left. Isbert keeps the football. He's at the 50. He's to the 46-yard line, and he's fighting to a bye. He tried to get to the 45, and he took a pop. They're uh, holding him up there. It's legal. They're gang tackle him. They're setting him up for the thing, trying to get that ball back. It's uh, credit to Isbert. He's holding on to that football. Gain of seven for Isbert. Second and three. McKee Sport at the Downingtown 45. Under five minutes to play. Downingtown leads 14 to 10. Rutherford wide left, backs in the wishbone. Isbert fake to the fullback, gives the ball to Jermaine Cromerty. Cromerty lunges close to the sticks. This is going to be very close to a McKee Sport first down. He got a good spot. Referee Bill Grant's going to call the chains on. This is going to be very close. I don't, I, I don't believe he has it. He may be about, uh, maybe short, just very short. Of course, we're looking across the field. Yes, we are, and here come the chains. It'll be stretched out to see if McKeesport gets the first down. It's, it's close, and he is just a little bit shy. Six inches shy of the uh, sticks, it looks like the half length of the football. So it's about third and a half. Already three Eastern teams have won state championships this weekend. Southern Columbia in Class A, Mount Carmel in Class AA, Berwick in AAA. Downingtown looking to make that a sweep, but McKeesport has it third in inches at the Downingtown 43-yard line. Isbur under center. Rutherford wide left, backs in the wishbone. Isbur takes the snap, gives it to Casey Holtzman. Casey Holtzman didn't get much, didn't need much, but I don't think he got it. It depends where they uh, spot the football on this one. He's very close. Uh, I don't think he got it. I think we have a no gain on this situation. And we're going to, it looks like we're going to get another measurement. So the chains will come on the field again. Casey Holtzman just did not get much on that carry. Of course, he could be very close. It's uh, going to set up an interesting fourth down situation. Doesn't make it. Holtzman, a 5'9", 168-pound fullback. The sticks are stretched, and he didn't get it. He gained two inches on the play. Be fourth and very short for the McKee Sport Tigers. Could, I think the season could be wrapped up in four inches. Could be here. Sticks are almost on the Downingtown 42. The Tigers are just inside the Downingtown 43. Isber under center. Kovac will go over the football as soon as the umpire walks away from it. Now he does. Wishbone wide receiver left. Isber sets the play. Billy Isber under center. Quarterback sneak. Didn't get much, but I think he got enough for the first time. Spot is he's at the line. If he's at that, he's, at, he's got it. He's got the first time. Billy Isber lunged to the 42-yard line. That should be enough for the McKee Sport first time. Wait until they unpile. Clock is stopped with 3.58 to play. And for our third straight time, we're going to get another measurement. So looks, looks like he's over the stripe. The, 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 yard, the yard marker's on the stripe, and the ball is over the stripe. Let's see what happens here. The chain gang is getting a workout here on these last few plays. Sticks. Chains are straight. First on by two feet. First and ten Tigers. At the 42-yard line, a fresh set of downs for the red and blue. Jermaine Cromery comes out. Keontae Campbell comes in. Tigers have not huddled tonight. As we told you, they rarely do. 3.58 and turning to play. Downingtown leads McKee Sport 14-10, but the Tigers are on the move. Kovac snaps the ball to Isbert. Glenn Allen, left side. Glenn Allen's got a hole. He's inside the 30. I can tackle. He's inside the 25. I can another tackle. Spins inside the 15 down to the 11-yard line. A great run by Glenn Allen. Big play by Glenn Allen on that play. We have uh, uh, one of the Tigers hurt on that with a great block is number 68. Uh, Kovac. Kovac. Great block. I came up, lipped a little bit, ran down there. He's not celebrating on what, the 10-yard line? First and 10 at the Downingtown 11. A great run by Glenn Allen. Wide receiver right. Wishbone backfield. Rutherford is the wide receiver. Isber fakes the Holtzman, keeps the football, gets to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain. This will be a second and 10. The ball at the 11, 3.15 and turning to play. 
It's tough territory down here in the red zone. They uh, they have to come up with it. Uh, clock's right down. It's winding down to the uh, three-minute mark, and we're running out of time. Kovac over the football. Isberg gets the play. Rutherford wide right. Tigers have not attempted a pass all evening. Taking a long time to get the play in. Wishbone backfield. Tigers are set. Wide receiver right. Isberg. Quick count. Fake the Holtzman. Option left. Keeps it. Dances inside the tennis. Touchdown to Kingsford. Barry Isberg with the 11-yard touchdown run. And the Tigers have taken the lead. 16 to 14. They took the lane. Isberg took the lane. Right down there. His lane. He didn't score on it the first time. They kicked the field goal. He took the lane. He read it well. He had the pitch man face out there. Carmody going to ready. Allen coming up behind him. He took it himself and took it in. 2.44 to play in this football game. Rutherford on to kick the extra point. A very important extra point. 11 yards. 11 yards on that. Billy Isber just danced his way into the end zone. Kovac snap. Good. Isber puts it down. Rutherford's kick is up. And it is good with the score. McKee Sports 17. Downingtown 14. You're listening to the state championship playoff game on WIXZ. When it comes to your family, the quality of meat is important. Lampert's Market, Grandview Avenue, McKeesport, gives you quality fresh meats. At Lampert's Market, they trim more fat than many butchers do, so you get more fresh meat for your money. Enjoy Lampert's own homemade sausage, horka, paprika bacon, Polish kobasi, Hungarian kobas, and potato scorf, expertly made and smoked on the premises. Order your skinless, shankless, silver star low-salt hams and Albert's low-salt boneless hams now to beat the rush. Rick, Jan, Clarence, Scott, and the entire staff at Lampert's Market would like to wish everyone happy holidays. Hey, John Petko here for Channel 11 Sports. I can't believe another year of Skylights is over. We covered a lot of yardage in Chopper 11, and one thing I know for sure, nothing beats the players and fans of high school football in western Pennsylvania. I felt honored to recognize these schools each week with a now coveted Skylight School Spirit Award. It's our way of saying thanks for making this the best Skylights season ever. For now, I'll see you in the Petco Zone, only on Channel 11 News. More news, more Petco, more often. For a complete wrap-up of today's championship game, read Monday's McKee Sport Daily News, available at newsstands throughout the area. No one covers the Tigers like the Daily News. Put on, that's all it is. 2.44 to play in this football game. There was a personal foul against Downingtown on the extra point, so McKee Sport is kicking off from the Downingtown 45-yard line. Question now, 2.44 left. Can the Tiger defense hold? Downingtown has three timeouts remaining. They have shown a potent offense. Rutherford boots the football. Don Field taken at the goal line by Aaron Harris. He's at the 5, the 10. A hole opens up. He's at the 15. He's at the 20. He's got some room. He fumbles the football. The ball is loose. Who's got the football? Who's got the football? There's a scramble for it. Somebody tell me who's got the football. Big pile up, and the officials are digging right in there. Who's got the football? The Tigers field. The Tigers have it. They have it. With 2.36 to play, the Tigers have recovered the football in the kickoff. Number 33 again for the Tigers. That's got to be, uh, who are we looking at here? Hey, Kelly Kellett, his second big fumble recovery tonight. That's who had the football. So Downingtown has three timeouts remaining. There's 2.36 to play. McKeesport has the football at the 32-yard line of Downingtown. Mark it at the 33. What a huge play by the Tigers special teams tonight. What a huge play. Clock rolling now, 2.30 to play. Isber under center. Wishbone flanker left. Isber turns, gives the ball to Cromerty. Cromerty finds a hole. They're going to be ball tackling. He gets inside the 30 to about the 29. Take their time. See if John Barr starts to use some timeouts. Not yet. And there it is. There's his first one. Got 2.12 left. 212 is left to play in this football game. Let's take a time out here, too, with the score. McKee Sports 17, Downingtown 14. You're listening to the PIA State Championship football game on WIXC.
For nearly 38 years, the Elbow Room has been doing what they do best, serving great homemade food and drinks. Offering a complete home-cooked menu all day long, nobody does it better than the Elbow Room. The Elbow Room features a mouth-watering menu full of dinners, sandwiches, appetizers, and snacks. The Elbow Room, located on West 5th Avenue in McKeesport, is open seven days a week, Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 1 a.m., and Sundays, 3 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. The Elbow Room thanks you for letting them do what they do best, serving you. And now, a moment with one of the 1,700 men and women of U.S. Steel Claritin Works. Hi, I'm Barbara Backlars of Monroeville. I'm a training manager here at U.S. Steel Claritin Works. I serve on the advisory board for a program called New Choices. This program helps single parents and displaced homemakers become active members of the community. The 1,700 men and women of U.S. Steel Claritin Works, making a difference on the job and in your community. You're listening to the PIAA State Final on Wixie 1360 WIXZ. 2-12 to play. McKeesport leads Downingtown 17-14. Downingtown using its first time out. Gain of four for Cromarty, so it's second and six for the Tigers at the 29-yard line of Downingtown. Wishbone, wide receiver right. Isber under center. Isber turns, gives the ball to Cromarty. Cromarty juking and jiving for about four to the 25-yard line. We'll see if Downingtown stops the clock. It's still rolling, and now we got the clock stoppage with 2.03 to play, so it's time for us to take another break with the score... McKee Sports 17, Downingtown 14. You're listening to the PIA State Championship football game on WIXC. White Oak Chrysler Plymouth is proud to present the new 1995 lineup of Chrysler Plymouth models, including Cirrus and the Neon Coupe. The world's most advanced designs belong to Chrysler Plymouth, and the easiest way to own your own is to visit White Oak Chrysler Plymouth. They have a limited number of 94s at year-end clearance prices and 50 1994 special factory purchase cars that can save you thousands. New names, same great deals and service. White Oak Chrysler Plymouth, Route 48 across from the New Oak Park Mall. Come and see why our name is appearing on more cars in your town. And congratulations, McKee. Sport Tigers on your WPIAL championship. The more you have to lose, the more the Wilson Bomb Agency can help you. As an independent insurance agency, they know about the universal security policy from Continental Casualty Company, one of the CNA insurance companies. It protects your home, boat, jewelry, auto, and more in one convenient policy for one competitive premium. The universal security policy. Call the Wilson Bomb Agency at 751-2200. That's 751-2200. The Wilson Bomb Agency. For a complete wrap-up of today's championship game, read Monday's McKee Sport Daily News, available at newsstands throughout the area. No one covers the Tigers like the Daily News. Billy Isber went off the left side, kept the football, and was held up about a yard shy of the first down. And now Downingtown looks like they're going to take their final timeout with a minute 47 left. The clock stops with a minute 47 left. Timeout by Downingtown. So the Whippets are out of timeouts with a minute 47 left. The key sport needs about a yard for a first down. They need about, uh, let's just check that a little bit, Paul, looking over there. That yard and it can translate to about a foot if you're looking from here, maybe 18 inches. That's where it is. The Tigers need to get a first down. Minute and 40 seconds, 47 seconds to go. Uh, they need to keep this drive going, not, not to score any points, uh, but uh, to control the football and uh, run out the clock because... The Downingtown is out of timeouts right Downing now. Downingtown is out of timeouts. If McKeesport gets the first down on this fourth down play, for all intents and purposes, it would be over. I, I don't know why uh, George Smith didn't ask for a measurement on that play. He left. Backs in the wishbone. Now George Smith tells the Tigers to huddle up. The referee is uh, talking, uh, got his head, headphones on. He's talking up here to the press box. For some reason, he's uh, I, he borrowed uh, uh, Jamie Eccles' head uh, headphones, and he's uh, they're singing up here to the press box for for I don't know what. They're in front of the McKee Sport bench. Referee is going back out onto the field. They're not waving to us, are they? No, they're not. Hi, Maybe they're saying hello. Uh, hi, ref. They know how excited <laughs> you are. You got your tiger flag out there. You're ready to go with it. Oh, Paul, okay, you they, put, they put more time back on the clock is what took place. Oh, is him. that right? They put, okay, put six, six more six, seconds six back, seconds on, the back on the clock. Minute 53 to play. It, this makes this uh, this play uh, that much more critical for the Tigers. Tigers have not thrown a pass all evening. 
Does that surprise you? No. <laughs> Wide receiver left backs in the wishbones, fourth and less than a yard. Isber under center, the ball at the Downing Town 23. Isber, quarterback sneak, right side, didn't get much, but didn't need much. We'll get an indication here soon. Depends on where the spot is, but it looks from here that he has it. Referee no signal, Billy Isber gets up from the football. It's over the stripe. Guess who's coming back on the field again? <laughs> the chain gang. The sticks are going to come out there, so they're going to draw out this drama a little bit. The play only took two seconds. He's very, very close to a first time. I don't know if he made it, Paul. Well, we'll see. I mean, uh, the clock will start no matter what after this play. It's just, did he get it? Fuck the ten taggers! Gentlemen, move the sticks! We got a fresh set of the lines! Rest of the football, they've got a first time. And the clock can roll and the Tigers can take their time. What is most important now, just hold on to the football. Four plays, they can run this, they can run this clock right on. Minute 38 and turning. Billy Isbert turns, Casey Holtzman, Casey goes off the left side for a couple to about the 20. Downing, think Downing Town can't stop it. The Tigers should huddle on this. Uh, they really should huddle here to take up a little more time. They are. That said, George Smith heard me. See that? <laughs> he tell me. He listens he said, to you. He listens. He listens. He tapes it. Listen. Hey, we got some strategy going here. What's he picking up for us? I don't know. Minute 15 and turning to play. Now the officials have stopped the clock with a minute and 14. Another Why are they stopping out. the clock? And that, that's not going to make the McKee Sports fans very happy. Why are they stopping the clock? <clears throat> a little equipment timeout. That should cost them a... They can't. That should be a penalty on dining time. Brandon Short just threw up his arms in disgust. Minute 14 is where the clock stops. Now referee Bill Grant getting ready to turn the arm and let that clock roll again. He's got the arm raised. He just hasn't turned it yet. Fans aren't happy about that, as you can hear. It's second and eight, McKees, but now the clock goes. There it is. Minute 10 and turning to play. And George Smith saying, huddle up, let some time run off this clock. The Tigers are anxious. They want to get up to the line of scrimmage. They want to go. One minute to play. Rutherford wide left, backs in the wishbone. Isber gives the ball to Casey. Holtzman off the right side. Casey's fighting. He's inside the 15 to about the 13-yard line. He's very close to another first time. They really don't need a first time. 47, 46, 45, kick it off. You know, the, the, the clock is rolling. Oh my, oh my, oh my, 38 and turning to play. The They're Tigers. starting to feel it over on this side of the field. They're starting to feel it because the Mon Valley, it's going to be party time. I hope everybody's lining the streets in McKee Sport. Get everything out that you party with. Noisemakers, champagne, whatever it is. All the cops are here. Isbert down to a knee. He's down on bended knee. They've got the arms extended, folks. The McKee Sport Tigers are the Quad A, W, the Quad A, P, I, A, A, state champions of timeout. It is incredible. McKee Sport, the city that could has come away with a state championship football game. Oh, baby, baby. They're dancing on the field a little bit. Helmets and arms extended. There's confetti on the field. I think they gave George Smith the Gatorade back. Brandon Short is just walking around. What a fantastic football game he played. McKee Sport is the state championship football game. We came on the great migration to Mansion, came and conquered. Your final score. McKee Sports 17, Downing Town 14. You're listening to the PIAA State Championship football game on WIXC. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Here's a little something you ought to know. We got groceries and gas and food and fat. We got a whole lot of saving going on. Cause time is money coming straight from, honey. Supermarket lines are too long, but we got groceries and gas and food that's fast. We got a whole lot of saving going on. For grocery.
groceries, gas, and food that's fast, pull right up to your nearby Buy and Fly Mini Market. No long lines, no parking hassles, and open when you need them. Now that's convenience. You're in, you're out. That's what Buy and Fly is all about. Whether it's for a fresh piping hot cup of coffee, a loaf of bread, snacks, or even lottery tickets, stop into a Buy and Fly Mini Market today. On the south side on East Carson Street at Station Square, in North for Sales on Route 30 at Route 48, or in McKeesport on Walnut Street near Route 48, also home to the area's newest Subway Sandwich Shop. We got groceries, gas, and food that's fast. We got a hub out of saving going on. Fall leaves, cool air. There's nothing as beautiful as autumn. Unless you're one of the 60,000 people in Allegheny County who fall victim to the change of seasons and the effects it can have on asthma. Any day you may encounter a trigger for asthma. Dust, mold, cold air, stress, even exercise can cause airways to become inflamed and make it difficult to breathe. If you or someone you know has asthma, this fall there is new hope because of the Regional Asthma Center in Forest Hills, offering a full range of services that relate to breathing disorders all in one building. The process of gaining control of asthma is simplified at the Regional Asthma Center. The professional team specializing in lung diseases and allergy will work with you and your physician to design a treatment plan that works. For more information or a free brochure about the center, call 1-800-ASTHMA-6. Ask your doctor for a referral to the Regional Asthma Center or call 1-800-ASTHMA-6 for an appointment. You or somebody you know will breathe a little easier if you do. The Regional Asthma Center, located on Ardmore Boulevard, Forest Hills. New hope for people who suffer from asthma and breathing disorders. A division of McKeesport Hospital. We're committed to doing things right. Everybody at Castoro Iron and Metal says go Tigers. Like the Tigers, Castoro Iron and Metal is committed to doing things right for the people of Pittsburgh's Mon Valley. They take pride in the tremendous Tiger football season and urge them to victory. It pays to recycle at Castoro Iron and Metal, West 5th Avenue, McKeesport, under the Dravosburg Bridge. Committed to doing things right. Doing things right. Community College of Allegheny County South Campus is taking a giant step into the future. Their current multi-million dollar expansion and renovation program will keep CCAC South Campus competitive well into the 21st century while still providing affordable, quality education that's close to home. For information concerning admission, registration, or course availabilities, telephone 469-1100. Community College of Allegheny County South Campus in West Mifflin, 26 years of stepping forward and changing lives. Hand-dipped chocolate candy is the ideal Christmas gift or stocking stuffer, but you wonder, when do I have time to make chocolate? All the time needed is to call the original Dorothy's Candies, Route 48 in White Oak. Since 1947, Dorothy's Candies has been making delicious hand-dipped chocolate from family recipes. From marshmallow cups to peanut butter cups and truffles to turtles, if you've seen it, Dorothy's Candies has it. Don't let the idea of candy as a gift stop at home. Dorothy's Candies can mail candy cross town or cross country. That's the original Dorothy's Candies, Route 48, White Oak, a quarter mile south of the Oak Park Mall. You're listening to the PIAA State Final on Wixie 1360 WIXZ. They're looping and celebrating. Brandon Short just came over to the sidelines, helmet, held his helmet aloft. The McKee Sport Tigers are the state champions of Quad A football. They quenched, quenched or quelched, squelched, I guess is the word, the Eastern dominance for this weekend. They had won all three of the other state championships, but this one belongs to the West and belongs to the McKeesport Tigers, Norm 17-14. Team of Destiny, 